Good morning, everybody, and I welcome everyone to our day two on uh, on our webinar on the production of video lessons and audio list lessons. To officially start our day two, may I request everybody to please put ourselves in the most holy presence of God for the prayer. In the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. Amen. Father, thank you for every seat and slots that has been filled here today. For each mind and heart that fills the presence of this room, we thank you. Only you truly know what we are setting out to accomplish today. We have an idea, a vision, hints, and daily instructions. We have talents, abilities, and time to work. However, only you can see in perfect detail the end of every beginning. Every project, every season, every life, nothing is ever in vain. Or even mistakes and missteps are used for good. Forgive us for our pride, Father, the pride that puffs up and the pride that threatens to unqualify us. Strengthen our con confidence in who you have made us to be. Set us free from comparison in order to work together efficiently. Bless this webinar today. All those present as well as the lives of those we will encounter afterwards. Ready us to make every moment count. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. In the name of the Father, of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Good morning, everybody. And to officially welcome us, help me welcome our school's division superintendent, Mr. Edelberto Opinaya, for his welcome message. Thank you very much, the Dean. Thank you very much, uh, Floor. To our Assistant School Division Superintendent, uh, Ma Marian Alera, our Chief of the Curriculum Implementation Division, uh, Dr. Mary Arlene Carbonera, our Chief of the School Governance and Operations Division, Dr. Mari Cartia Blin, all Public Schools District Supervisors, all Education Program Supervisors, made by special mention to Eva. Uh, who is uh, working on this uh, training to be realized with the uh, floor and the rest of the group from the curriculum implementation division. All school heads, uh, elementary and secondary, all teachers uh, who are able to tune in to this uh, training that we have started since yesterday. Uh, I am thanking you so much for your indulgence. Uh, I know uh, it's not uh, easy to be sitting down in front of your laptop uh, the whole day, uh, no, half day of yesterday. And I think we ended up the first day of our training last night, uh, almost, uh, when is that, almost seven uh, in the evening. And I would like to inform all of you that I am also inspired by your active participation in last night's uh, lecture by our resource speakers, Sir Arbin from Thailand. And uh, I was also happy that the questions were flashed on the screen. And so I was able to read also some of the questions and was able to fathom also what are inside your minds as teachers, you know, as participants in this training. The various questions I was able to read yesterday has given me more more insights on how to go on with this challenge, this challenge that we are facing now, uh, to continue the our services of education to our young Filipinos amid this COVID-19 pandemic. I would like to inform you also, my dear teachers, that uh, while we try our best to make our preparation for August 24 opening, uh, using the learning continuity plan, which I will also be dishing out to you after uh, after a while, because uh, uh, there's another speaker before me uh, this morning. Uh, we come to think of uh, some important realization also with ESDS Alera, especially on the reproduction of modules. 
-hmm. You know, we are greatly challenged by this reproduction of modules because at the first uh, instance of computation done by our APSS uh, under the leadership of Dr. Mary Arlene Carbonera and our assistant school division superintendent, uh, Mary and Alera, uh, we need a total of uh, to achieve more than 3 billion pesos for the reproduction of our modules. Now, come to think of it, my dear teachers, my dear school heads, we will find it hard to produce that amount. Basically, that 3 billion, if that is to be sourced out locally to our own funds, that could not be realized. Now, per instructions from our regional director, we have to strategize accordingly the reproductions of our modules. Okay? So, that give us, uh, well, I should admit, that give us uh, a little headache with uh, is this Alera, how to go on with it, okay? So we have to think of some strategies how to realize the reproduction of those modules. But today, I don't want you to be bothered with it. Please give your 100% attention to our uh, training on module reproduction, uh, not in module reproduction, but on uh, how to prepare video lessons. Because video lessons is one of the learning modalities that uh, we'll be using in our learning continuity plan for Land of the Learning. I would like to tell you that your mastery in this video lesson will also help us solve the problem of learning module reproduction. Once our children, uh, their, the learning modality that is appropriate for the children, specific groups of children that we have, it will give us a reduction of the number of modules that we are going to reproduce. So, uh, from that alone, this activity that we are having now on video reproduction, uh, uh, video lesson reproduction, will help us in our problem of uh, uh, video reproduction. Uh, no, the problem of module reproduction. Okay. Then, aside from that, we will be engaging also some modalities. But if we will engage radio modality, that always goes with it, a printed module to be given to our children. Because minus that uh, printed module, our children will find it hard to follow the, the audio lessons that we will be recording and be given to the, to the learners so that will be able to listen that in the respective uh, residences through a radio kada uh, kung bag-uron nga masaksakan o USB okay so with the problem of module reproduction one solution to that is our video reproduction because if our children will be listening to lessons through video to a video then uh, that will definitely give them uh, a visual a reception of all the lessons, meaning they can go on with it, they can learn the lesson without a printed module on their hands. No, was like a gunitan nga module, okay, na na basanay video lessons na makita. So that our problem on uh, on module reproduction will only be focused now to those children uh, who don't have uh, smart TVs at home or don't have computers at home, who don't have uh, laptops at home, okay? So, my dear teachers, again, I am uh, requesting all of you to please uh, practice what we are uh, going to learn in the past two days because that will help us ease the problem uh, we are facing in module reproduction. I have tried my best to engage our respective mayors, actually, uh, to assist us in the module reproduction, but I know the resources from its uh, municipalities will not be enough to print all the modules if we would like to give each of our learners a module, a printed module. Although at this point in time, I am uh, thanking so much our governor, Governor Emilda Gebranza de Maporo, for her assistance in the printing a module. Uh, in fact, as of now, the provincial school board is already in the process of procuring the risograph that will be distributing to each of the districts so that you can proceed with your printing immediately once uh, 
those restaurants will be available because uh, we have already prepared our modules to be reprint, uh, to be printed. Also, I have to be honest with you. Uh, for the last uh, meeting that we had from uh, hosted by the national, uh, the central office, the last information we have is those modules coming from the central office accordingly will be made available uh, this week or after next week. Oh uh, no, this week and next week. And uh, when those modules will be available, I have already given instructions to our curriculum implementation division to please carry it over and uh, try to see if it is applicable in our division. Uh, you know, uh, teachers as we are, I know you know the basic rule that lessons will be uh, more understandable to our children if those lessons are contextualized. Okay? So if those lessons prepared in Manila will not be uh, uh, suitable to the present setting we have in our province, then I think uh, we have to make use of the modules that we have prepared. I wish I am very sure a number of these modules need also to be contextualized. That's why I have foreseen that problem in advance. I have instructed that we have to prepare our own module also because those modules, I believe, are fully contextualized with respect to the culture, the present culture that we have in Lanao del Norte. Also, uh, I've given instruction that first we have to prioritize the uh, video uh, making for lessons, especially those lessons for MTB MLE, because uh, uh, that is the only lesson that we. I am so sure that we have to contextualize and has to be prepared based on the present setup that we have now in Lano del Norte. Okay. Uh, I know we still have much uh, a number of things to learn today, and uh, I may have uh, talked so much, but then uh, just forgive me. I have also to inform you that uh, how, how, what are my anxieties, my actually my I am I am not confused, but the only thing that uh, really baffles my mind today is how to go on with the module reproduction, uh, given that our regional director also even almost 11 p.m. last night texted me on uh, making some follow-ups on how much the local government unit can provide us to help in the reproduction of modules. That alone has given me the, the thought that uh, module, module reproduction is a great problem, actually, a big problem for us. So, again, as I've told you, never allow that to baffle your mind, to bother you. Let us continue learning uh, how to produce video lessons because that video lessons will uh, undoubtedly help us uh, ease the problem we have in module reproduction. Once again, I am thanking so much our Assistant Schools Division Superintendent, Marian, our uh, Curriculum Implementation Division through Dr. Mary Arlene Carbonera and EPSS and PSDSS, IBA and uh, Mr. Flor Bilardi, our IT officer, who is uh, really instrumental in the in the management of the technical aspect for this uh, webinar that we're having now. Also, once again, I am also thanking our resource uh, persons. Our regional director, uh, Dr. Arturo Bayuco, supposed to be, is the first speaker this morning, but then RD texted me early this morning also informing me that uh, he has also to attend a regional uh, meeting for regional officials also. Uh, uh, I, 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 I could not get the exact uh, title of that uh, meeting that RD is going to attend this morning. And so he begged to uh, transfer his time this afternoon. Okay. And uh, anyway, it is, we have to wait for RD because uh, he will be inputting also a very important information uh, about a learning modality. Okay. Uh, it's about, uh, I, I, could forget, I forgot the, the topic we give for RD, but then uh, it's a topic that is worth listening and that topic also will be used in uh, in our delivery for Lano Del Norte. Once again, thank you so much to Ma'am Ann, uh, CID, to Ma'am Arlene, and all ABCs, Eva, 
Thor, and the rest of the crew instrumental in this uh, webinar. Once again, see you in a while. Thank you and good morning. Thank you, Sir Ed, uh, for that message. Uh, we feel you, Sir Ed. We know that uh, we, we understand your feelings. And we can assure that each one of us from the field up here in the division office, we will do everything. We will help each other so that we can attain every goal that we want to attain, Sir Ed. Okay, so this time we will be here. Yes, sir. Okay. Ngayon naman, makikinig tayo sa mensahe na ibibigay ng ating kapitan. Kapitan sa pag-produce ng video lessons and audio lessons. Let us hear a message from Dr. Maria Eva S. Edon, ang kapitan ng webinar. Ma'am Eva. Ma'am Eva, nakamute ka. Hello everyone. Nakaon, nakaon na tanan. Hello, good morning everyone. Para wala. Dili, dili ni organizers. Dili, organizers ni Ma'am Eva. Two minutes lang ha, please. Uh, so, so that I can attach my presentation. Uh, okay. 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 Can you see my presentation now? Okay. All right. So we have successfully done our day one of this two day seminar or webinar. Uh, this time, uh, we will be joined by a lot of very important personalities, one of which is our very own regional director no, of DepEd Region 10. Okay, so uh, let me start my presentation uh, with uh, ideas on video lessons, no, importance of video lessons for distance learning. So video lessons are effective tools in distance learning instruction, especially at this time of pandemic. Accordingly, it is estimated that 75% of data traffic on the internet will be for videos. Only in Facebook, daily are assisted 100 million hours of videos. There are over 1 billion active users on YouTube and every minute, about 400 hours of video content are loaded on this platform. Mobile devices contribute with these numbers. Via mobile, the average time spent on YouTube is 40 minutes. Videos are more efficient in capturing and keeping the attention of the student than reading materials. Would you agree? I know you will agree with that. Through demonstration, this tool is able to make easier the comprehension of a complex concept. Through the use of image and sound, video lessons contribute to building a better relationship between teacher and students. That's the reason why we need to come up with video lessons to really make the learning experience of our learners enjoyable, and fun now while they are still uh, staying at home because face-to-face uh, -face still is not allowed uh, during this time. Okay? So uh, for the benefits of video lessons, actually video lesson is a very important resource that allows storage of lessons, games, and other educational 
materials. So in a flash drive, we will be able to store a lot of lessons no? so that during the week, our learners will be able to have enough materials for our for their learning activities video lessons facilitate thinking and problem solving the connection between visual clues memory process and the recall of new knowledge was made by shepard and cooper and cooper and mayor and galini 1990 it was observed by alam 2006, that the creative challenge of using moving images and sound to communicate the topic is indeed engaging and insightful. Video lessons assist with mastery learning. In some cases, video can be as good as an instructor in communicating facts or demonstrating procedures to assist in mastery learning where a student can view complex clinical or mechanical procedures as many times as they need to. With video lessons, actually, our learners can really um, learn and continue learning, no? Because he can, the learner can be able to review the lesson, especially when uh, the learner will have doubts a learner will have a difficulty in certain aspects no, of the lesson. He can easily uh, review no, the lessons because the lessons that we will be producing, again, will be placed in a flash drive. Okay? Video lessons will inspire and engage students. Okay? So according to Wilmot and the company, Video lessons show that there is a, there is a strong evidence that digital video reporting can inspire and engage students when incorporated into student-centered learning activities through increased student motivation, enhanced learning experience, higher marks, development potential for deeper learning of the subject, development of learning learner autonomy, enhanced team working and communication skills, source of evidence relating to skills for interviews and learning resources for future cohorts to use. So there are actually a lot of, of studies no? or researches that really uh, that would tell us that the use of video lessons is very effective no? in terms of making our learners learn better. Learner-centered videos depicting classrooms and events situated within authentic contextual settings promote in-depth analysis and higher order thinking. So this means to say that when we make our own videos now, we have to consider that the videos are supposed to be learner-centered. So. Um, if you have watched very closely the video of Sir Arvin, you will notice that he actually tried to uh, be talking, no? Parang she, he is assuming that he has learners in front of him, okay? So, so that uh, the strategy that he was employing is learner-centered. No, it's not just uh, just merely delivery of a lesson, okay? But he was showing that he was uh, trying to converse. No, it was conversational. And again, as what I have said, uh, the lesson, no, the strategy that he was employing actually was um, explicit, no, explicit because he was at first modeling. Okay, the lesson, especially that that lesson was for uh, lower grades. He was modeling, no? Spe specifically, he was trying to pronounce the words properly because it's language, no? The lesson was language. Uh, he was trying to pronounce, say the words properly. And then later on, he tried to ask learners to, 
to read the words with him, though he was just trying to, you know, to whisper <laughs> the the words, no? trying to show the formation of his mouth while saying the words. And then later on, he asked no? the learners to say the words. So it's actually uh, trying to use the I do, we do, you do strategy so that at the end of the lesson, the learners will master no? the the uh, delivery or the uh, production of words that he wanted the learners to learn. And of course, the mastery of the concept uh, that he wanted to um, teach the learners. All right. Now, videos can also provide a common point of reference for reflection in the social construction of knowledge about teaching through perspective purposeful editing and production that draws explicit attention to a pre-identified set of skills, behaviors, or knowledge. So at this point, uh, please have a copy of the essential learning competencies because all the those uh, competencies will be used for this uh, video production. As uh, per instruction of our school's division superintendent, we need to produce the first, uh, the videos for the first three weeks no, of instruction. And uh, since the deadline of our self-learning modules is July 13, hopefully we can we can be able to already use the lessons not uh, presented in the in the self-learning modules in our production of video lessons, because that would be our basis for our preparation of the script. Okay, tonight, Sir Arvin will be teaching us how to develop a script, but uh, early this morning at around three o'clock, grabe good, basta magkaedad idara na mga igsoon, medyo sayo na kayo mumata. Uh, three o'clock or four o'clock in the morning, I shared uh, to our group chat, no, sa ato ang mga that uh, several. I, I have several groups, no. Uh, I have a group uh, for science with Mam Ma Belen. I have uh, Mam Ma Owings group. I also have Mam Ma uh, Mam Ma Ami Bagus group for tubod tubod uh, teachers. And of course, the ones that we we organized for all learning areas, uh, which in which all our education program supervisors and our uh, public schools division, uh, public schools district supervisors are there, so that our communication would be easy, no, and fast. Okay, so I shared there the format or the template that, that I was asking Sir Arvin. Actually, um, Sir Arvin immediately sent me the copy of the format, but it's simplified. So, and I'm very happy to inform all of you that yet last night, uh, there were already teachers who sent me copies of their outputs. Grabe ka, pas, pas ka, ayaw. That's the reason why Murag Lami kayo positive kaya kung ora today or this morning because I'm sure that our teachers will be able to really handle this task. Grabe good. Uh, I'm so inspired. I'm actually I'm also very inspired with uh, the support that we are getting from our schools division superintendent from uh, Sir Edelberto Plinaria. Hello, sir. Good morning once again. Of course, sa ato ang Assistant Schools Division Superintendent, Ma Mary Ann Aliera, na very early this morning, na nawag jud kay, to just check no, sa ato mga preparations. And of course, to our OIC CID Chief, Ma Mary Arlene Carbonera, grabe good. And I'm very, very happy, Juan, murag sangko sa langit akong kalipay, because our regional director really uh, did not, uh, hesitate to accept our invitation. Pag 
when I communicated to the regional office about this uh, webinar, murag siguro mga 30 minutes lang, I received the kuanagyod, kanang ARDIS, kanang approval of our, uh, of our request uh, for him to be with us to also discuss about radio-based instruction. Okay? And of course, na upward, we will have our uh, the regional English super supervisor who will also try to help us understand fully uh, the the ha the house no in deli the delivery of uh, video lessons no as teachers kana mga model teachers sound jud nato and of course uh, complementing the modalities no with these uh, video lessons. Okay, so gana kayo puno puno kayo ang atong today webinar. That's the reason why I'm so inspired. <laughs> Grabe good, no? Uh, I know that you are already very eager to present also your outputs. Pero later on, uh, siguro mga if we will have time, we will be uh, watching the outputs no of the teachers who sent to me their video lesson. Mga cute kaayo nga mga video lesson, I assure you. Grabe cute ka, mga paspas -pas kaayo. In fact, yesterday also, when uh, you were asked by Sir Flor Villarde uh, to submit an output, grabe ka pusot-pusot sa ato ang group chat, ang mga tanang out, klaseng output sa kalibutan. By the way, I would like to thank uh, my kumpare here, here my brother, Sir Florderick Villarde, for uh, really very, uh, actively engaging. No? He is very actively engaging in this uh, activity. Rabi ni siya, Superman is si Sir Flor Villarde. Ano siya, dapat mudaghan ni siya sa Tibo Kalibutan. Okay? So, uh, let me continue. Tips to create. No, video classes in distance learning. These are just tips, but I know, that especially for those who have experience already in, in uh, producing video lessons, I know that you have more ideas. By the way, later on, uh, Sir Earl Tolero, ako ginitiyang gitawagag sa iyo sa buntag because I thought that it's important also that we will learn uh, the techniques no, in editing. Mas maayo nang maka-learn na tadaan sa video editing so that uh, tomorrow, you, will, you can already start. <laughs> Grabe no, excited sa nga tanan. Pero pwede man, that's possible. Uh, later on, we will be grouping ourselves, we will be organizing ourselves into different teams. Na. Okay, so uh, one tip is that we have to give preference to short videos. Okay, so especially for the for key stage one, which is kindergarten to grade three, we will have to, uh, I think we need to prefer short videos so that our learners uh, will be excited in doing more activities, no? Okay, so as well as any classes of long duration, long videos tend to become dull, correct? And lose the attention of the student. The assimilation of the information becomes easier when the video is less than five minutes in length. But this is just for the uh, learners belonging to the, keys, to the first key stage, okay? So here, um, since we will be really focusing our attention on the uh, essential learning competencies, we need to also really consider uh, the length of our video. Okay, in okay, five minutes, Marag, uh, for me, uh, this is just for kindergarten and then dapat is conversational. So, this means that our model teachers or our demonstration teachers will have to be very creative no? in uh, the delivery of the lesson. 
para dili matulog atong mga bata. Okay. Basi ga imagine ko while while the video is uh, playing atong mga bata na inikatkat sa sa tanang na ang bayabas na ay nagdula then sa kilid dayon na ay mama nga gagunit og bunal. <laughs> so kinahanglan jud nato ni nga we have to be very creative para mahook ang attention sa ato mga bata sa video no instead of going to video games my god okay long videos should be more interactive the one that we have shown you katong kasir arvin it's actually some seconds away from 50 minutes murag 59 something minutes no 59 of oh, no 49 minutes di ito siya 49 minutes but uh, for for learners uh, they i think no para sa ako a feeling na ako mahook attention sa learners in that video because the learner will have to react no on the prompts that sir arvin was giving and the activity was so focused the lesson was so focused that the learner will really master the lesson dili kinahanglan i complicate nato ang atong mga activities no in the video dili nato kinahanglan nga complicated pod ang mga activities o ang mga uh, requirements that we will be asking our learners in the sense that we have to consider all kinds of learners that we have here in Lanao del Norte dapat jud we have to be very conversational very creative, very colorful, so that our learners, instead of going away to play, diha na siya, oy, si teacher na sa, na po si teacher Floor, Tanang, I will watch the video of teacher Floor because I will be, I am very excited to learn from him. Ana, dapat ang feeling sa atong mga bata when, uh, we will use uh, they will use the video lessons that we produce dili kay maingo mohila kay adili lagi ko ana mo tanaw kay bati kaayo isog pagdud kaayo naong nang teacher nga naa nang video <laughs> oh my god so dapat jud ang smile oh katong smile is sir arvin ato tong praktisan sa samin kinahanglan <laughs> before uh, we start with the production Mag, atubang atubang sa tasa sa amin bahala mang gudili ta kaayo tantong inaanak ka mga gwapa dili ta mga Miss Universe or mga the awards back diha og mga beauty basta lang na atay grabe nga smile nga consistent pud ha dili nang smile karon din imurogad kad no, ni murog na sad dapat consistent ang smile so kana na ang Praktisan na ito na itong smile ha, o praktisan po na sa samin. We have to, palit na siguro tag samin nga katong pinatindog kita nga, ta, kanang na ang taas nga, makover, makita gin ang itong whole body. Kaya mapraktisan po na ito ang ato ang facial expression, praktisan po na ito ang atong mga gestures, ang atong mga movement na dapat, one, yun siya, graceful, yun ta nga, mura namang good po ta aniga, piyat koan kanan ang show sa theater nga ana biya mga theater koan biya ni artists biya ang mga teachers di ba dapat ato gyud na siyang i-learn eh then ang smile dili gyud wala on gyud nga kana gyung mahurot gyud ang lingag nga o bukad <laughs> okay now ah uh, ang long videos should be uh, again interactive have activities among the lessons, propose questions, no? Dapat na amoy mga activities. So, a part by part ang atong lesson. Um, we follow the format that Sir Arvin is giving uh, and then we also fa use the activities and the content that we have in our self-learning modules. Have activities among the lessons, propose questions that encourage the reasoning and debate, offer quick summaries, and if possible, 
divide the content into modules so that the student can organize rest breaks between lessons. Na siya. Okay, so, inang lanjud, ang atong mga, ang atong mga kaning ni ang, ang atong mga, nasan ni siya, eyebrows, ato na ginang i-arrange, then ang mga lipstick na to, especially for, for the demonstration teachers, ha? I know nga, ang, those who were chosen to become demonstration teachers uh, possess all the qualities no of a of a an a TV anchor okay a communication skills very important and then of course ang mga kanang ng ability to project in front of the camera di ba <laughs> Okay, so dapat yun ang kuanjod. Then ang ora-ora gid nato kinahanglan na agi na siya. Bisan pa o naglagot ta gikan ta sa balay kay nag-away ta sa tong bana or nasukot ta sa tong anak. When we shoot the video, dapat change na judayon ang ato ang mga ora. Dapat naka-project na judayon nga bahala na mo tanan didto sa balay sa inyong problema. Kunya na na ako nasulbaron, inig ulit na ako. Karon, nagtrabaho ko, I will do my part, no? As a demonstration teacher. Ano, ginang ato ang kuhan, ma'am. Una-unaon na ito sa ato ang, ato ang utok, ma'am and sir, no? E para yun, perfect ang production of our video lessons. And our video lessons will be used by our learners because they are excited every day to watch us, no, through their TV or through their uh, laptop, and to listen to us, kung radio ang ilang gamiton, okay? So ana lang yod karon. I want you to uh, try to practice smiling. Sige, one, two, ready, everybody, smile. Kanan taman sa talungan ang smile ha. Walay pwede magmuro-muro anang mga and uh, especially for demonstration teachers, for model teachers, dapat ang smile pa ingon diri sa dalunggan. Mm. And mga eyes, dapat nakasmile smile gihapon. Okay? Okay. Then, we need, the next tip is that we use, we need to use a transcription. One of the advantages that online courses and video classes in distance learning offer is the possibility of being fully inclusive. In addition to not require that the student move using subtitles, audio imi and images, it is possible to meet people with limitations and different abilities. So uh, we have to use transcriptions. The reason, uh, the, that's the reason why in Sir Arvin's video, naagid siya mga anang words, no? mga transcriptions. Okay? These are very important especially when we know that our, many of our learners are still uh, belonging to the frustration level. So, appeal na po niya ang reading and comprehension. Dapat ma-integrate kina nato sa atong video lessons. And, mga ma'am and sir, please use explicit instruction in, especially in uh, the reading part, no? Reading part of your lesson. Kaya naamang yun tayo reading part. Ma mathematics man ka din ha, ma science man ka din ha, ma TLE, ma, e ma ESP, ma MAPE, ti, uh, ang saan ni, uh, ang sapat siya, Filipino, naamang yun na siya yung reading and comprehension part. Vocabulary part is also very important. And, we follow the uh, KSA standard of our, in our objectives, in our lesson objectives. Bas kitang salang sa isa ka lesson, uh, na one, one, uh, one objective for knowledge, one objective for skill, and one objective for attitude. Ayaw nagdaghana ka ayaw kay malibog ang atong mga utok, labaw pa malibog ang atong mga learners. So, the simpler, the better. Ana, Jod, ang importante ora, guapa, mm, diba? Naka-smile and fully loaded ang content sa atong lesson. 
And then we have to be careful with the size of the file. Okay, so uh, we have to be sure that the file that for every le lesson is uh, enough for uh, the video to be uploaded no? and uh, to be uh, saved in the USBs, especially that we will be saving video lessons in when, you know, a good number of video lessons in one flash drive. So, uh, isa ka flash drive mo contain na siya video lessons for English, science, for all le learning areas. Kay syempre, di mapunta ka afford o tagsa ka, ka USB for learning area. So, atong isulod sa isa ka flash drive ang ang video lessons sa tanang learning areas. Ato pa ng ayuhon pag una -una, let us strategize that so that we can be able to really uh, make this thing happen. Huh? Okay. For the division of Lano del Norte, one of the modalities, we have known this already, we have been telling you that uh, digital video lessons with self-learning modules is one of the uh, learning modality uh, learning delivery modality that one of the learning delivery modalities that we will be adapting no? so uh, this is actually based on the survey that we have had uh, some months ago we did a survey and we really tried to come up with uh, an innovative uh, learning delivery modality for La Lano del Norte Kinigyan ang gi-emphasize ni SDS, no? ni Sir Eddie, nga panang na ang mangita gitag way so that uh, all our learners will be able to really uh, have access to lessons. Okay? So muna, ato yung muna muna ang unsag yung modality ang kikinahanglan for Lanao. This is why uh, we included no? in our learning continuity plan this learning modality, which is digital video lessons with self-learning modules, okay? That's the very, very reason why we need to create video lessons. Now, what are to be converted to video lessons? Karon, kanang na ang dapat na butang na sa atong mga huna-huna, no? O sa atong kasing-kasing, atong kasing-kasing o kalag. Na all lessons in all learning areas and grade levels, no, that's from kindergarten to grade 12 uh, for the first three weeks are to be converted to video lessons. Diba? Okay, so here, we need to organize ourselves into teams. Okay? We have to uh, create teams by learning area and by grade level to to be supervised by the education program supervisors and the public schools district supervisors and district in charge. Okay, sorry, ako na 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 wala, wala na ako na appeal, but included here are the district in charge. Each team must be composed of the following: one teacher demonstrators, two script writers, three. Uh, school or district IT for the technical. Kay kaming mga teacher demonstrators, parihan ako, nga medyo idadidaran na, pili naman ko kay kay balo anang unsay to slow ko, sir, ma'am, pili na ko anak, ma'am, kanang tuluan, dito ako usahay na Earl, tulero, kanang 100 ko niya, balik-balik ang istorya, pag yun ako na nag-gets. <laughs> Sorry na lang, Earl. And then, le uh, lesson delivery coaches. Uh, we will be selecting language teachers, English and Filipino teachers will serve as lesson delivery, delivery coaches. I'm not saying that uh, teachers from other learning areas cannot do it. Pero kinimanggong mga language teachers, anang, they are trained no? to, uh, they are trained uh, on proper delivery, mga enunciation of words, mga inana, sa uh, during college and even uh, now that they are teaching. So, na sila enough training. But then, well, of course, if the team uh, thinks, no, ang kanang usaka grupo thinks na they don't need, they won't be needing 
uh, delivery coaches anymore, then okay lang. Basta uh, just be sure nga maayigin ko ang inyong delivery. And of course, we need to have staff, mga teachers gya po ni sila, to serve as floor directors. Eh, kinanglan man tamay ngo nga, okay, uh, ready, start, camera, uh, lights, camera, action. Ano da yun? Para ba the show ta? Pwede na siya, pwede, you can make your own video alone inside your room, just like what Sir Arvin is doing. Pero dapat, kabalo na gitatanan sa mga kuan, mga kananaang processes sa and mga technicalities of these things. So, pwede na pa, you, uh, if you want to be alone, you just inform us. Just tell us nga, kaya na kaya na ako, ma'am, ako raani isa. O kira kaya ko. But, for the beginners, uh, we, can, we may create teams, no? Ang usaka team, usaka teacher demonstration, uh, demonstrator, usaka script writer, usaka technical uh, I expert, usaka anang coach, and usaka floor director. So, five members for each team, actually. Okay? That's for every grade level and for every learning area. Now, balik sa tadi ay mga igsuon. Balik ta ha? Now, listen. In a grade level, for example, grade Two, English. Grade two English, ah, first three weeks of the lessons. That would mean around ten, ten lessons, no? Ten lessons, kay. Na may mga lessons na taas ni continue pa the following day. And then it's not every day mangyud nga. Put don jud from Monday to Friday ang lesson. So ibutang talang, no? Ah, average ten lessons. Kanang kung isara ka teacher demonstrator, uh, basin o mo split, mo tumbling, mo latay sa alambre na ng teacher demonstrator sa kadaghan kay niyang lessons nga eh, salida. So, meaning to say, what I'm saying here is that one, uh, one uh, grade level, one learning area would be needing more than one demonstration teachers. Okay? Kinin script writer sab, Pwede sa na nga two or more to really uh, hasten no? our task or our uh, activity, no? script writing activity. And then, pero kaning sa technical, kaning sa, eh, kaning sa technical po, this will also be involved in the uh, video editing. Okay? Kaning coach, pwede rin sila tagsara. In one grade level, one learning area. Isa lang. Pero ang teacher demonstrator, ang script writer, pwede na siya more than one. Depende na na sa inyong sabot, sa inyo ang program, uh, inyo ang learning area supervisor. Okay. Every, again, every learning area and grade level shall have a team leader who shall be responsible in providing the division team with updates on the development of the video lesson. So, meaning to say, aside from the education program supervisors and the district uh, supervisors and in charge, there must be a teacher who will be the point person per grade level, per learning area. Kaya siya ang mag-report. Kaya dili man sad pwede mga isuon nga magkadaiya na lang tag-report kang IPS nga ma mahimo ng 100 ka group chat nang naa sa iyahang Facebook ni IPS maglibog na siya unsay unahon og tubag just like sa ako ah there are times nga bisan alas 12 ala una na kanang apay magchat na ako <laughs> na apay mga questions na apay mga concerns okay ra man sa ako ah, basta makamata ko but kung sai I actually, karon sa ako ang edad, char, char, nagyot kayo ko, no, sa akong edad. <laughs> uh, I usually, kanang sleep at around 8 or 9 in the evening, and then I wake up at 3 o'clock in the morning. Kay, ang ako ang youngest child, uh, kuhan mang yun kayo, grabe yun kayo nga, 
Ah, dili siya matulog kung dili na ako siya taparan. O di ba? Social kay siya nga pagkabata. So, uh, early morning na dahil kumumata. At 3 o'clock, I will uh, already start anang uh, checking my my cellphone or my laptop for the concerns no, sa coming from the field. So, na mga teachers, especially now that we, we are very busy with the uh, evaluation of modules. Kuandra, ka na na ang, ako na siya pang tubagon. So, katong mga na ay mga concerns anang pagkagabi, din ako ma-replyan da yun. Sorry ka ayaw mga ma'am o mga sir kay gagok na kuana. Siguro, wala ta kay balo. <laughs> okay? So, naagyo yung point person per learning area, per grade level, nga mauna siya ang responsible of uh, reporting uh, or updating the supervisors. Kaya ang supervisors, I know they are also very busy now. Grabe good ang madugo po ang evaluation of self-learning modules. Okay, so we have now the division management team. Uh, actually, wala pa na ako ni napakita kay SDS, pero uh, I will sh just show this to you uh, so that you will know, no? Ang um, uh, we have the, of course, uh, frontliners, <laughs> mga EPSS, Education Program Supervisors, District Supervisors, District in Charge, and our Learning Area Lead Principals. Okay? Ako, I'm very happy, I'm very proud of the uh, Lead Principals for English. Kay Tilagid in Town, karon ang nag-dive yun sa evaluation of self-learning modules. Grabe good ni sila ka-active kaayo. Nagang salamat. Hello mga ma'am, og sirs. Thank you really for taking the lead kay anang medyo na busy pa ang inyo ang inahan diri sa kahanginan sa uh, aning a webinar. But I'll be with you uh, maybe tomorrow. Just uh, Let's just be very careful sa ato ang mga anang face-to-face -face encounters these days kay medyo na tay problema. All right, so our over, uh, our pinaka head, no, our bossing is uh, of course our schools division superintendent, Sir Edilberto El Oplinaria, and uh, Ma'am, our assistant schools division superintendent, Ma'am Mary Ann Aliera, and of course our OIC chief of the CID, Ma'am Mary Arlene Carbonera. Then, ako, I will, I'm taking the lead, no, also. Uh, together with Ma'am Amelita S. Bagol and Ma'am Nor Amelie Sangakala. Of course, uh, all of this will not happen without our ITO, no? our division uh, ITO, Sir Florderick Villarde. Okay, so now I tried, ah, grabe, alas tres kadlaw, nag-ihap-ihap, nag-ihap ko mga kaigsuunan, kung pila dyan ka buka atong kinahanglan ng mga teachers who will be involved in this activity, no? 13 teams. Akong giihap ang 13 ka teams because we will be including uh, kindergarten. We have MTB. Diri pa di ay gani na this will increase because uh, I did not include, sorry, kaayo ma'am Tintin, Sir Lito, and Sir Anang Naan, ma'am uh, no. Sani, IV, Anang Dapat na adi ay included here ang ALS. So, this will make, uh, this makes 14. 14 teams by learning area and by grade level. So, kinahalan ta again, teacher demonstrators, script writers, video editors. Na, na ako yung video editor, si Sir Earl Tolero and Mark Will Villacora of Tubod Central. Uh, but we will be needing a lot more. Okay? Taghan tayo. So, Ah, uh, kani ha. Sa teacher demonstrators, ato namang na identify because you had your screening. And I'm very happy to inform you that uh, in the list submitted by our public schools district supervisors, murag we have reached 100 plus murag or more than that. Basta daghan kaayo, daghan kaayo per district. I'm very happy with that uh result because we will be needing a lot of demonstrators. Of course, we will be 
uh, needing a lot of script writers who will be working uh, side by side with the teacher demonstrators. Okay? Sila gid ana magtandem, dili gid pwede dili sila magtandem. Video editors also, daghan atong gikinahanglan, I am sure our uh, district tanang ICT in charge, our school ICT teachers can help us with this. Sa technical also, mga video editors and sa technical, pananaan kung sa ono magkubi-kubi anang mga lighting, mga ana, kinahanglan ta ana anang mga sa kamera, mga ana, kinahanglan ta ana ng mga anak nga mga tao kay tanang na ang kita nga mga demonstrate mga teachers dili ka ayod ka familiar ana do na ay uban nga master na pero na ay pareha nako ba nga dili ka ayod ko kay balo ana dili kayo ka balo dili familiar then floor directors uh, so natay daghan ana nga gikinahanglan and delivery coaches so language teachers again Filipino and English language teachers. Kaya ang ato ang pag-deliver, dapat manggod maayo kay atong pag-pronounce of especially when, especially for uh, key stages 1 and 2 na kinahanglan dyan tag-sakto nga pag-model sa atong mga ba-ba sa uh, production of sounds, no? Especially for reading, no? And uh, oral fluency, no? That we need to really uh, teach our learners how to uh, how to open our mouth properly when we when we pronounce words when we uh, produce the sounds of the letters of the alphabet. No, I dili man pwede nga marong ang ato ang pag produce the sounds of the letters of the alphabet because if we make a mistake in in producing those sounds, our learners will have a difficulty reading. The words, no, later on, okay. So, ako siyang gi multiply. Ah, grabe good. Ada stress kad lao nag multiply ko and in 13 grade levels times 9 learning areas times 6 seven is equal to 702 people. <laughs> Kana ra kung isara good ka teacher demonstrator per grade level per learning area. Kung lima na kana siya mag multiply na siya. Um, sa makadaghan. <laughs> okay, no, I uh, put here, I place here, if only one teacher is assigned per grade level. Uh, diba? Makuratan taan ni sa kadaghan sa atong gikinanglan. Now, here is our production timeline. Okay, this is just a suggestion. Uh, later on, I will um, make adjustments after we will uh, really uh, be able to uh, discuss no more. Pre-production, uh, ang akong timeline uh, here is July 6 to 9 because it's already July 7 now. July 6 and 7, we have our webinar, okay? Orientation on video editing, July 8, but kung uh, mahuman ka ni Earl, if Earl is able to finish now and you, are, you will be able to produce the outputs and you will say nga, uh, okay, nagit kaay mo, kaya nagit kaayo ninyo, then uh, we will adjust, no? Video organizational meeting. This time, kanin siya sa July 9, kamo na ang magbahin-bahin by learning area na. By learning area. So you have to connect with your uh, learning area supervisor. And then preparation of script and setting up of mini studio sa July 10. We are actually trying to uh, pang, uh, choose the school where we would be uh, using as our uh, center, no? Kung ka ng uh, management center. Okay? Wala pa. Dili pa final siya because uh, we will still be uh, we'll still be considering a lot of things. No? So later on, we will announce where we should be uh, used uh, or which school will be used as our control center. Okay. Then for our production of video lessons, we will start on July 13 up to July 30. Now this is uh, the actual shooting na and all, editing and all. Then post-production, it's actually August 3 to 14 because 
uh, after that, we will already be distributing the video lessons. So reproduction of soft copies of the video lessons will be on August 3 to 7, 2020, and distribution from August 10 to 14, 2020. So that um, we will be sure that on before August 24, all of these uh, flash drive no, containing the video lessons will already be distributed even to the highest peak. Bisan dito sa, mabot na niya sa koan, sa pinaka, dito sa Mount Koan, sa mga Bukira. Okay? Okay, so uh, I will, uh, ako lang gibot ang three mga point persons because you will be needing point persons. I have already discussed this. And then, uh, later on, I will discuss with you because it's already... Uh, 11, uh, it's almost 11, our schools division superintendent, I think, is already ready for his presentation also. Uh, can you, this is work in progress. I actually made the process no, uh, from, from the production of video lessons up to the time when the video lessons uh, reach the, uh, the learner. No? And... Uh, and the process on how the learners will submit their outputs and how the teacher will uh, grade and return their outputs to the learner. So, ako siyang gihimuan o murag kanang na ang process flow so that uh, the teachers, you will have uh, an easy one kanang, uh, so that the, the video lessons will uh, be passed to the learners uh, smoothly. Okay? So, uh, for a while, ha, kay nag, na ay nag-call, kajut lang ka ayaw mga iksuon. Breaks at ta two minutes. Hello? Yes, yeah, sir. Good, good morning, sir. Yes, sir. Hmm. Yes, sir. Hmm. Yes, sir. I'm sorry. Ah, yes, sir. <laughs> Okay, 11 to 1. Okay, sir. Okay, sir. Sige, sir. Uh -uh. Yes, sir. Okay, okay, sir. Okay, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Katong sa MS team, sir. Okay. Uh, all right. Okay. Okay, sir. Okay. All right. Okay. Sige, sir. Uh -uh. Thank you. Oh, sige. Oh, mag-chikarata. Bye-bye. Mm -mm. Sige, bye-bye. Eh, Naka-off naka ko, Flor? Naka-off ko? Ah, uh, karon? Okay. Daganon sa ako sa SDS? Ah, hello. Uh, ag once again, uh, kanang the regional office through uh, Sir Ramon, uh, called because RD will be with us in a short while. At 11 o'clock, RD will be with us. So, pag lunch, ano, it's, ele it's almost one, ha? Nang 11, um, grab something to eat na lang, ha? So that uh, uh, you will not miss, no, any any part of RD's uh, discussion, okay? So, uh, let's have a break for around uh, about mga 10 minutes, ha? Okay, break sa ta. Pang nita sa magmakaon, kajut. Everyone, please. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Ma'am Eva. Thank you, Ma'am Eva, for that. Um, okay, okay. Uh, ah, Nakakuan, na naka. Okay, o mudagan na. Ako kay SBS. Okay, Ma'am Eva, thank you very much. At this point in time, we will be listening to the learning delivery modality is here in our province. This will be given to us by our school's division superintendent, Sir Eddie Oplenaria. Sir?
Dito lang kay Ma'am Tin ha, kay gitawagan pa Ma'am Tin. Okay sir, okay sir, okay. Okay, Sir Floor, while, while we are waiting for our SBS, uh, let me recognize our 70 atten attendees here in the MS Teams. And may I know, Sir Floor, pila ka buok ang nasa live streaming? Naapod ka sa uh, 17 katong sa presenters group, 49 sa attendees group, and then, 540, oh, 600, 609, as of now, 609 sa uh, live streaming. So, more than almost 700. 700. Oh. Okay. Okay, so, hello and good morning to all the 700 participants for today's webinar. Hope you had, you are having a good time, so... We will wait for our SDS. He will talk about the uh, learning delivery modalities. Hello everyone. Uh, announcement lang ang ato ang uh, attendance. Same link. Ready na. Pwede na mo mo access. Uh, atong attendance. Pwede na mo mo access. Same link lang yapon. Kagapon. Sir Floor, nakashare pa ang screen ni Ma'am Eva? Yes. Okay. I think RD is coming, Sir Floor. RD Bayokot is actually here. Ipawala na na akong screen. Uh, Off screen na daw yeah, ang screen sharing, Sir Floor. Thank you. Good 
morning, RD. Ma'am Ten, si RD rin. Ready na si RD? Hello, hello sir RD. Welcome to Lanao del Norte. Okay, everybody. Good morning once again. At this point in time, we will be hearing the message from our very competent and dynamic regional director. Now, other than Dr. Arturo Bayukot Seso 3. Sir RD, go ahead. Good morning, RD. Good morning, good morning. Uh, message pala o lecture? <laughs> the written RD. Ah, okay. Thank you. Thank written you. RD. Uh, sorry that I have interrupted your flow of training considering that I just realized I also have a meeting at 2 o'clock this afternoon on Social Development Committee. Currently, I'm also with the other laptop because I'm also attending the Economic Development Meeting of RDC. So I hope you will make your adjustments as I would like to take this time now and a little over 12 to be able to finish my talk. Thank you very much. Am I am I clear? May I please ask the moderator? Yes, sir. Loud and clear. Uh, thank you very much. Let me now share to you my slides. I hope I can do this all by myself. Okay. Floor, are you the one facilitating floor? Yes, sir. Please let me know, Floor, if the PowerPoint is already there. Na, na, Ardi. Ready na. Nakita na? Yes, Ardi. Okay. Thank you very much. Um, I would like to take this chance of sparing time with you because apparently the entire region is really banking on different learning modalities. Even if we say that the prominent modality that we are adopting in most of the schools of the entire region is our modular approach, but we would also like to take advantage of the opportunities for our other modalities that would augment, that would supplement, that would complement and support our other modalities in terms of delivering education as we keep the promise that education must continue. And I'm very happy that I'm being invited by Lano del Norte. This is a sign that you will take advantage and maximize the opportunities on radio-based instruction because this is a very good platform to really make sure that we are able to reach the unrich, you know, especially those that are in the far-flung barangays which do not probably have um, internet connection or even TV access. At least in our radio-based instruction, we will be able to reach them. You know? Just to remind the participants to please turn off your microphones so that you will not disturb the uh, presentation just give me a raise of hand there's an icon there to raise your hand if you want to ask questions but probably i think let me finish first my talk before i'll go to the open forum okay now in the inventory of the regional office per reported by the division superintendents of the nine cities and five provinces region 10 is one of the <clears throat> regions that have the most number of radio stations available. Uh, region 10 actually to my recent count has 88 radio stations. And this is an opportunity for us to really make sure that we can maximize the possible support of this RBI, of these radio stations. Now probably you will be asking, uh, if one radio station will just give us like th three hours for one week, the other station will give two hours for one week because you know buying the airtime is really very expensive and probably they are just offering some few hours in a week time as part of the corporate social responsibility however we can still maximize the different few times given by the different radio stations by drawing it on the board try to make good schedule so that for example if a lesson in grade four english is aired at, at uh, brigada uh, radio brigada 8 to 10, and probably the other station offers 10 to 12, that's another two hours, then probably the next learning episode of the next subject or the next grade level can also be tuned in to another radio station. That's why we really have to make it on the board, the alignment of schedule to make sure we shall be able to, to conduct the radio-based instruction. There's a very good model that we can f learn from because Apparently, the radio-based instruction of alternative learning system in 
the city of Balay Balay has been going on for 12 years already. And I think uh, bits and pieces, we also have little experiences and we have to capitalize on those. That's why we would like to congratulate Lano Del Norte with Superintendent Oplinaria and Assistant Superintendent Aliera and the rest of you who really are very passionate about exploring the possibility for radio-based instruction. Now, let me start my presentation looking at the pneumonia in Wuhan, China. Well, a pneumonia of unknown cause was, was detected in Wuhan, China, and that was first reported to the World Health Organization country office in China on December 31, 2019. So, Actually, it all started already last year, late of last year. The outbreak was declared a public health emergency of international concern January 30, 2020. So as far as the Philippine response is concerned, we already declared the community or enhanced community quarantine and instituting some protocols for this March 15 of, of this year. So we were a little bit late compared to the other countries' response. But again, we are also doing our share to make sure that we are able to survive all this pandemic. No? So if we continue, nobody expected for this. And we cannot learn from, from the past because this is for the first time that this pandemic hit not just the Philippines, but in the entire world. So we just have to do some explorations, experimentations, and we have to do hit and miss to be able to really put our efforts together in stopping this pandemic. Now, if you look at the next slide, it talks about the global lockdown due to COVID-19. No? And it, it's quite scary, even the fonts that is that, that are used, and the font that is used by my artist, uh, trying to convey the message that this is something very serious and we cannot just take for granted. However, in looking and striking a balance between health and education, we really have to be assertive that life has to move on. Uh, well, while, while the pandemic, as we acknowledge that it's very scary, it's threatening the lives of people in the world, but we also have to make sure that our life doesn't end here. We have to continue. And for example, we at the education sector has to give a promise that education must continue. So that the COVID-19 pandemic has been one of the biggest disruptions to education the world has ever known, affecting more than 90% of the world's students' population. Um, last, last week or two weeks ago, I was invited by Secretary Briones to attend the Southeast Asian Ministers of Education Forum, and that was attended by the Ministers of Education in Southeast Asian region. And they shared the struggles, the initiatives, and the practices in terms of putting, at least, uh, avoiding avoiding the pandemic or even put measures to really stop it. And as education sector uh, representatives, they were also talking about their plans, about their implementation of the plans that they have. And uh, on behalf of the Philippines, Philippines, our secretary has presented the learning continuity plan of the basic education in the Department of Education. And I have learned in that forum that in, in the Southeast Asian region, the Philippines is the last to open the schools because we were set on August 24. And that's even giving so much decisiveness of the secretary because looking in the region, looking at the region or at the neighborhood countries, we just realized that many of the countries have already resumed their classes. Many are opening this month of July and the Philippines is going to open the last. Well, it's not a competition. We're looking at the different situations, especially health conditions that would drive us in terms of decision making. When is the right time to really open our classes? And to us, it's a good time that we're opening it on August 24 because the remaining days uh, are really spent in terms of the big preparations that we have to do to make sure that we are ready on August 24. Now, on the suspension of classes due to COVID-19, there were, well, we were caught that, we were caught that in later part or middle part of March, our classes were suspended. Some of the schools were not able to run their fourth quarter exams so that the department introduced 
uh, transmutation table for us to be able to still compute the final rating of the students even without even without taking the four the quarter four exams as there were no opportunities for our schools to run it because we were already caught by the declarations the restrictions and the protocols due to the pandemic and well summer classes continued but with very few schools offering and the summer classes was only focused on on accommodating students with failed subjects and no longer for advanced learning okay now we continued to we continue to face the challenge but the greater challenge is are we really prepared for august 24 there's a lot of doubts that as as people try to evaluate our readiness they're also putting some negative uh, thoughts that we can never be prepared however at the education sector we really feel that we are trying to prepare the best that we could so that education really has to happen because you could just imagine if students will not be engaged in learning for example they will not enroll like if you're a parent of five kids and who these five are not engaged in learning for a year then what will they do at home maybe as a parent you will also be confronted with how to control the, the children they will have boredom and i don't think they can really just withstand staying at home doing nothing for the entire year so i think the best way to engage or learn our students our children is to really engage in learning and that is why kailangan talaga natin isulong ang pagbukas ng ating pasukan sa August 24 upang maipagpatuloy ang mga kabataan sa pagkakataong matuto kasi po tayo naman po ay naniniwala with the different key messages we have been sharing we believe not just because we are educators but because we believe that education can change the lives of our children and now is the time really to prepare even at the height of the pandemic we continue to prepare them for their future and the department of education northern mindanao has crafted the learning continuity plan and we call it rx adobe rx stands for region 10 well it's also a sign of on prescribing something if you want to have a checkup with the doctor and the doctor prescribes you using an rx pad because it really tells you that this is the prescription i'm gonna give i'm gonna be giving you no? so we're we're prescribing adobe for region 10 as contained in the learning continuity plan and adobe stands for of course alternative delivery on basic education and we anchor this at the quality policy of the office as we continue to also operate as an iso office and iso is not just for status symbol our iso certification is proving that we're doing our delivery effectively and efficiently for productivity and if you look at the ds i see the ds uh, quality policy of the region it stands for delivering effective and efficient services even at the height of pandemic we cannot just deliver things for granted we have to make sure that effectivity and efficiency are still met and of course we continue to implement policies and standards because we are in a bureaucracy and our organization is is systemic and so that it operates like an ecosystem where one cannot uh, exist or cannot operate with the others for example in DepEd, if you say central office is policy formulation level of governance and regional office is quality assurance monitoring and evaluation but the implementing levels of governance where actions are taking place are in the levels of divisions districts and schools where all of you belong you do not underestimate your existence because in the department of education the entire agency cannot go somewhere unless the strongest level in the hierarchy is moving forward and that is the implementing level of governance where our teachers principal supervisors are at the front line in terms of providing quality education the filipino children deserve we also anchor it to yielding best learning outcomes we do not as what i've said earlier we do not take this for granted we are still measured according to the learning outcomes no matter how good we feel but that goodness if not seen at our major clients our learners then i think we still fail in terms of our delivery 
we should ensure that our employees' performance are excellent. And how do we do that? We continue the capacity building, the continual improvement efforts, interventions, initiatives to make sure everyone is ready. Because if you say, are we ready for August 24? It's not just about logistics. It's not just about our students' gadgets. It's not just about, it's not just preparing the physical setup at home to provide the learning space. But if we talk about readiness, that includes, of course, the preparations our teachers must do. Yung mga guru natin, matalino at madunong na yan. Kasi matagal na yan nagtuturo. Paulit-ulit naman tinuturo nila ang mga asignatura taon-taon. Kaya lang ang tanong, sanay ba sila sa distance learning? Na itong pinag-uusapan natin. And we will be about implementing the distance learning. Yun. Uh, maybe for many, this is for the first time. Because this is the only time that that distance learning will be adapted in the mainstream as a regular and general approach. Meron naman tayong distance learning in the past. For example, ang ating open high school program, that, that, that project is, no? ang ating open high school program, distance learning na yun. No? There are also approaches and alternative learning systems or ALS that are also under the distance learning. Pero sa pangkalahatan, Pa, paramihan, baka ito lang ang pagkakitaw na umpisahan natin. And we really have to prepare for this. To be able to, con to sustain the customer satisfaction as the letter S in the word yes. Because after all, we will be measured by how are customers satisfied by the basic education services we deliver. Now, let's try to take a look at, I hope this will not preempt the presentation of Superintendent Eddie, but just to review to you on the menu of the learning modalities in the Department of Education, public schools for that matter, and even in the private schools. Because if you look at the pronouncement of the president, he said that for as long as there is no vaccine, face-to-face -face cannot be allowed. During the early preparations of the LCPs of the different divisions to include Lano del Norte, very prominent proposal is really the blended learning. The original concept of blended learning is really a combination of face-to-face -face and distance learning. Face-to-face -face online, face-to-face -face offline, face-to-face -face modular, face-to-face -face or radio TV based. Face-to-face -face is a regular feature of blended learning. Now, the blended learning, as DepEd will adapt, is already called blended distance learning. Why? Because face-to-face, -face, according to the president, cannot be used as a modality once vaccine is not available. Of course, uh, nandun din sa mga iniisip natin na bakit naman hindi tayo papayagan mag-face-to-face? -face? Kasi yung unang plano natin, face-to-face -face reduce class size. We have to reduce it if you are a teacher with 40 students, you divide the students into two. The first half probably on a Monday will have face-to-face -face, and the other half Monday will go to distance learning or modular approach. The next day they would probably exchange. Group one now goes to face-to-face -face, and group two, uh, group one will now go to modular and group two face-to-face. -face. And we are even empowering the principals to decide for the shifting because you know your conditions better than anyone else. Or if you also opt like, sir, can I do shifting weekly? The first group will have modular for the entire week. And then next week, group two will have the modular, uh, will have the face-to-face -face the entire week, while the one who had already face-to-face -face will do modular. But again, that has changed. The reason why we have to divide, because we want to reduce the class size. Why? Because the required minimum health standards have to be observed. And one of that is say, uh, is so, social distancing. If you contain the 40 in a, in a room, you cannot observe physical distancing. The regular class size of DepEd is 7 by 9. And according to the analysis of the engineering department of the Department of Education, says that if a classroom of 7 by 9 will have furnitures of table and chairs, we can put in there a maximum of 15 students only to be able to observe social distancing. And if it is, if it is uh, two-seater desks as the furniture, then we can accommodate a maximum of 20 in each uh, classroom. So that's why we have to divide. Because if we contain the 40, we cannot observe the minimum health standard requirements. Okay. Now, let's go to face-to-face. Face-to-face in this time is not the conventional 
but not the usual face-to-face, because as what I've said, we have to observe reduced class size. Let's go to distance learning, online. We know what online is. It requires internet connectivity. So there's a lot of questions, how ready are our teachers, our families, our children in terms of internet access. And online modality is divided into two. We have synchronous and asynchronous. When we speak of synchronous, it's real time. It is interactive. You can provide immediate feedback while you are still at the platform. Just like what we're doing right now in this Microsoft Teams meeting or webinar, this is actually synchronous. Because you listen to me right now real time, I can also listen to you if you have some questions. When we speak of asynchronous, it is still requiring internet connectivity, but it's not real time. It can be recorded. For example, if I'm a teacher and I'm going to give assignment to the student and give them the links like you, you, you surf and visit this link at the YouTube channel and then you can find the material I'm already trying to take a look at for you to be able to learn the competency. So again, does it require internet connection? Yes. But is it the real time? No, because you can actually visit it in the comforts of your time. Like kung tinatamad ka at sasabihin mo, may amiyang konti ko na lang siya panunoorin. You have the time control. But again, it still requires internet connectivity. This meeting, for example, I believe Floor, our tech assist, is recording this. And if this will be played tomorrow for some teachers who are not able to join us now, then that will already be falling under a synchronous online uh, delivery. Now let's go to offline. Offline, if you have the gadgets at home, you have the laptop, you have the cell phones, and then I can give you soft copies, e-books, or the self-learning module soft copies, or the digital formats. You can save it at the CD or at the USB. You can bring it to your homes, and for as long as my laptop, na, you can continue learning even without printing those modules because you have the gadget. Does it require internet connection? No, it doesn't require. Does it require electricity and gadget? Of course, because you cannot use it without this. Number three is modular distance learning. The one we are preparing, our, our grade, our divisions are tasked to write modules for the first, second quarter, or even up to the fourth quarter. Like Lanao del Norte is assigned to write the modules for grade six uh, in partnership with the city of Tangum. And you already have submitted your outputs for the first and second quarters. And currently they are being quality assured by the regional team of quality assurers and evaluators. And the target of the quality assurance completion will be July 10. On July 11, or probably 13 Monday, we can already give the divisions complete set of modules, soft copies, from kindergarten to grade 12, all subject areas for the first and second grading, at least for the first grading. And you can already start the production because modules is a modular approach is the answer to some parents and students who want to continue learning but do not have the opportunity for technology. Ang modular kasi, kahit saan lupalop ka ng mundo, pwede mong maipagpatuloy ang inyong pagkatuto, pag-aaral sa pamamagitan ng mga printed modules and even if you do not have electricity, you can still learn because it's hard copies, printed modules. And the next is TV and radio-based instruction. The focus of this webinar is to explore the possibility of organizing sections and creating teams. As the earlier speaker, I was able to listen the later part, that there should be an organization of manpower or the team to really be at the forefront of our radio-based instruction. Blended learning, I already explained to you, combination of face-to-face -face and distance learning, the orange and the gray. But again, if we now use blended distance learning, these are just combinations of online, offline, modular, TV, or radio, because face-to-face -face cannot be used. And then of course, there's homeschooling, the one in blue, uh, which is still, we are still awaiting for the guidelines of how this will be implemented. This is very prominent in Metro Manila area. Many of our celebrities, mga artista natin, ay hindi nakapag-aral dahil DC and they're just doing homeschooling. And one of the most special features of homeschooling is really to have a tutor of yourself who will really be there at your schedule, arranged 
arrange a schedule at home for tutorial and learning. And then, of course, apprenticeship, which is applicable to our grades 11 and 12 students who are in the internship, immersion, or on-the-job training. We call this apprenticeship. And if the required number of hours is just this, then we can probably extend a little bit in arrangement with our employers or our business establishments where our students are doing immersion to take advantage and 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 maximize the home the the honing of the skills through work because this is what we're doing okay now let's go now to the focus of our talk which is about radio based instruction what is this because this is uh, in focus this talks about the alternative delivery mode why it is alternative because it doesn't use the regular approach and the radio based instruction is an alternative delivery mode using radio broadcast to deliver our programs uh, it could it could be the alternative learning system programs as modeled by malay balai but now we're adapting it to the mainstream and this is a form of distance learning and it is able to expand access to education by bringing it to where the learners are it aims to provide learning opportunities to listeners and enable them to acquire equivalency in basic education through the broadcast of lessons. Again, there's a very good opportunity for us to maximize the, the RBI. Because, for example, baka nagtatanong ang iba, Sir, paano ba gawin yun? Uh, ang, ang isang grado kasi, Sir, ang daming subjects. Ikong e radio-based instruction, Monday to Friday, Grade one, ang grade one lang ang maka, ma, mataka, maka, makikinabang, for example. What about the grade two? What about the other subjects? Well, imposible man, naman na ang bata ay makikinig lang mula alas 8 hanggang alas 5, mula lunes hanggang birnes, at mula agusto hanggang abril. The students have a short limited span of uh, attention span. And it's not just about the question of attention span. Because if I'm a teacher, using the RBI, and I already have my learning episode recorded or probably delivered uh, delivered real-time or actual live delivery, then I must consider that I, I, I assume that, I presume that the students are listening with me, but after my talk should be the activity or the tasks that you deliver to the student so that he detaches himself from listening or you probably have the end of the program or the suspension or probably give the next learning episode to another group of learners, another grade levels, and that learner who has just listened, who has just listened to your talk, may now do the task that you provide them to ascertain that there is really uh, learning happen, that, that learning happens or learning takes place, because we cannot just we cannot just presume that because the student is listening, well, there might be learning in some ways, but in terms of concrete and maximum learning, we really have to triangulate it by providing exercises anchored to what was talked over the radio and for the students to produce the output as you designed so. So that's about it. And then RPI follows this framework. And the framework of the radio-based instruction, number one is to design. Very important that you design, you implement, and you evaluate. Earlier on, I think it was Eva who did a presentation. I was able to listen bits and pieces of the later part. And she was already discussing uh, uh, some micro details about designing. No? So in other words, you have to design the lesson. You cannot just appear to the radio live without preparations. The design has to be completed. So there are many things to consider in designing. And then from that, you implement the design and then evaluate to make sure that you learn from the past learning episodes delivered to improve the succeeding. Kasi doon tayo natututo. No? So it's a cyclical it's a cyclical approach that from designing, we do implement, we evaluate, and we go designing again, implementing and evaluate. No? So to design, to implement, and evaluate any interactive radio programs in distance education, first we have to define and analyze the three important basics of educational radio. Number one, 
when we talk about designing, it's the strategic technology plan, which is the first step to produce the interactive radio programs in distance education. The strategic technology plan provides the necessary answer and defining the components to accomplish successful interactive radio programs. For example, what are the things that I'm talking about designing? No? These are the seven periods. Number one, you try to take a look at the current, need, the current needs and expectations. Well, we need to profile our students, uh, not, just, not just on their option or not just on their choice of learning modality, but even in their learning space, uh, pace, learning speed in their learning styles. Well, we know Howard Gardner in his book, Frames of Mind, as he authored a multiple intelligence theory that we also have to profile our learners to be able to tailor fit to tailor fit our teaching style to the learning style. So again, that's part of looking at the needs and the expectations. We make sure that we are able to deliver what we desire for, and that should already be factored into defining. Number two is planning. So, pag na-define mo na, kailangan mo nang magplano. And planning the technology is to take a look at the needed communicational media. Uh, well, if we talk about radio-based instruction, kailangan pagandaan. Meron na bang radio-based learning episode scripts? Meron na ba tayong talents to really run the show? Like if it's an anchoring or broadcasting or a drama form and all those different styles, these have to be considered early right at the planning stage. No? At kung anong oras. So, dapat in the planning, you already incorporated all factors. Like the considered stations, the air times. Make sure that communication dissemination has already been at the full blast. That our learners already have the schedule. Where to tune in and when to tune in. And all these factors have to be in the planning stage. The second is examining. In examining personal sources and supports, we have to take a look at how to construct knowledge. Uh, no, we have to analyze the current situations and needs. You know, needs analysis is very essential to give the correct to, cor to give the correct um, initiative or intervention. So very very important that after we define, we plan, we examine, we take a look at it twice, three times to make sure that at least in the first three stages, we already are, are able to answer the challenges. No? The third is communicating with the stakeholders. It's very essential that our learners are guided with, sinabi ko na nga kanina, what channel to tune in and when is the right time, what subject are there and what lessons will be featured during the day. Hindi pwedeng ang bata. Sa kanila lang niya malalaman kung anong aralin, kung anong pag-uusapan kapag napakinggan niya na sa radyo. Kailangan meron talaga tayong blueprint that the child will have a copy so that kung mag-tune in siya the next to tomorrow as a scheduled 9 o'clock, alam niya kung anong pag-uusapan. At upang maihanda din niya yung mga, for example, the templates of the exercises that we already have designed to make sure that as he listened to the learning episode aired at the radio, he will already follow what are to be learned, how to learn it, and by using the materials that you already have prepared. Kaya kailangan talaga planchahin, planchahin kung ano yung mga bagay-bagay at i-communicate natin so that prior to the students learning, listening to the episode, he already has a knowledge na bukas pala ang pag-uusapan namin collective nouns. And I need exercise sheet A because there's an exercise there to use subject uh, verb agreement taking a look at the number whether it's singular or plural where the subjects used are, co are collective nouns mga ganong bagay so when the student is prepared on her table with the materials that will guide him or guide her in listening to the radio learning episode writing we will be succeeding in our modality the third, uh, the next is parang tumigil na to. Let's take a look at the uh, number five stage, which is crafting. The crafting the standards based on the mission statement to cope with the future challenges. 
standards have to be met. And what are standards looked upon? What standards are we talking about? The standards for learning, the standards set by the department, not just on the learning standards, but even on the how-to standards, the pedagogy that will be used to deliver for the students to also have the creativity and develop eventually their critical thinking because it's not just one modality or one approach or one exercise that is repeated to be able to learn things. And these standards have to be factored into the crafting stage of the RBI. Next is developing. So, kung balikan natin, we defined already the current needs and expectations. Then we already went to planning the technology requirements. Ano mga kakailanganin? Communicational media? Kung radio ba? At kung ano-ano? And then we examined the personal sources and supports. And then earlier on, I discussed with you, like, we have to communicate this to the stakeholders. Hindi lang po sa mga kabataan, even to the parents, because you know that the parents will play great role in distance learning now. And we're not even expecting the same support that they used to give while we appreciate their being supportive, but it's more than what we expect from them right now. Because distance learning, many of the students will have to study on their homes with with the parents' support. And that has to be considered. And from there, we take a look at crafting and now developing the goals and objectives to define the proposed outcomes clearly based on the ethic codes or ethical codes. And number seven, which is the last step, is creating. We create the learning statement for interactive radio programs. The plan must provide a specific description of the use of interactive radio programs in distance education systems. Just to go further, let's take a look at the, well, this is number two because number one, which contained the seven major periods in the plan. Ang una kasi noon, if, if you remember, what was the first thing I talked about, the macro, the macro essentials. Number one was design the strategic technology plan. And number two is implementing the program, uh, looking at the development process. So what does this tell us? So the second step of producing interactive radio programs is to implement the program development process. And how to do that? Number one, we take a look at the working on project timelines. Napakahalaga po. I think in everything that we do, we have to take a look at timelines. Because this is not unlimited time. There are budgeted lessons to be finished during the period. And if you look at the number of competencies to be covered in the entire year, there's just too many. And we cannot just waste time. So the timelines have to be set. And then we have to, working on project timelines to define the project tasks to work and f f to work it finely and punctually. Number two is budgeting. Our superintendents, our principals, or even teachers who will be involved in the RBI team organization will have to take a look at the budgetary requirements. Again, I was telling you that buying the airtime at radio station is quite expensive. And we do not have the budget for that. Does DepEd give us the budget? Well, generically, we can take it from our MOOE. But our MOOE is never enough. It has a lot of, of expenditures to really address. Like the mandatory utilities like electricity, water, security guard are the non-negotiable areas for our budgeting to be considered. So how do we go on RBI if we do not have the budget? We're just happy that we have philanthropists or the corporate social responsibility areas of business establishments that they offer us free airtime. Kung walang istasyon na magbibigay ng libreng oras, pwede naman tayo magpartner ng UNICEF, World Vision, at kung anong non-government organizations to partner with them on the funding side. Kailangan natin planchahin yung arrangement natin with the radio and then look for resource, generate resources, and generate partners to fund. <clears throat> but congratulations, Lana del Norte. I've heard that there's a radio station by the local government unit or even the TV station at Lana del Norte that, that is being offered to DepEd Lana del Norte for maximum use, I don't know if it's eight hours a week. 
So if it's going to be eight hours a week, that's of great help. That's already a big chance <clears throat> to maximize radio-based instruction as one modality for our learners learning to continue. In budgeting, we have to take a look at selecting the models for the broadcasting to estimate all costs and identify fund resources. The timeline and financial plan have extremely vital roles to accomplish the broadcasting interactive radio programs without any delay. Ano ba yung pinag-uusapan kong uh, development process? We have the four sub-steps based on the project timeline and budgeting strategies to deliver radio programs. My talk actually is complementing the other sessions and it has a connect to what was, I know if it was Eva, to what Eva has just delivered earlier on. And when we took at the When we, when we take a look at the sub-steps, four sub-steps under the development process, number one, we have to consider is time. Deciding the broadcasting style, such as live basya or tape broadcasting, because when we deliver RBI, we don't really have to go live at radio stations if we are busy, because we can actually record it in advance and just play the recorded learning episodes at the radio on that specific time schedule. But if you want to really do it live, then I think whether live or recorded, the preparations have to be done. So again, the type, whether it's synchronously or asynchronously, or even a mix of synchronous and asynchronous. I already defined to you what synchronous and asynchronous are. So again, you have to consider the type. Number two is the purpose. <clears throat> you clarify the objectives of the unit of the radio program that will be delivered. We have to break down. Eva was telling earlier on that we cannot be so ambitious to contain a lot of lessons in one learning episode delivery. Otherwise, we will fail in our objective. We will fail in our purpose. We have to sub tasks. We have to make it plain and simple. Remember, the RBI do not have the teachers at the side of the learners. So that if they don't actually pick up what you're saying, you can just repeat it because you're just at the side. On radio, they have to listen. But because it's programmed and the lecture continues, if the student was not able to pick up the messages at the earlier part of the learning episode, then there's a difficulty already to following through. So again, that's very important that we have to take a look at the purpose, making sure the purpose is doable. Can this be done in one hour? Can this be learned in one hour? Is this just enough or is it too long or is it too short that boredom will come in? Because the purpose that you have considered is not just enough for the time, time element. Number three is trust strategies. What do, what do we mean by strategies at this part of some steps under development process? I'm, I'm referring it to <clears throat> highlighting which critical thinking skills will be learned. In our strategy, we have to get into the focus of the learning, uh, of the teaching and learning. We make sure that our students are being guided, kailangan na bigyan ng gabay at patnubay sa kanyang pagkatuto so that at the end of the period, talagang nakuha niya ang inaasahan mong aral. And they will not just focus on the sub-activities. They, well, they will undergo the sub-activities mainly because we want them to get what is really set as an objective learned because of the strategies that we have employed. And then the last Subsector is components, defining what kind of the cutting edge technological devices are needed. So, kailangan, yan, planchain nyo kung anong station, anong radio, may transistor radio ba siya, ayos ba ang kanyang volume, may mga templates ba siya na kailangan gawin habang nakikinig, no? Because probably, noting details are non-negotiable non aspect, non-negotiable skill that a student must demonstrate while listening to a radio instruction. Hindi pwedeng nakikinig ka na lang sa radyo, wala kang ginagawa. Tapos, pagkatapos ng oras, saka ka mag kung ano yon. Well, uh, we rely on the memory of our learners, which are still in the full blast, 
but I think very essential that they also have to note details as they listen to the episode. And again, noting detail skill is really indispensable. We go to the next. Number three, kasi kanina tapos na tayo sa uh, designing the strategic technology plan. I have just discussed with you about about <clears throat> implementing the program development process. Now we take a look at the evaluating the implementation process. Habang ini implement, ini evaluate, so that we can still do adjustments when there is still enough time and the program is still not over. So what what do we expect in evaluating this? Number one. Receiving the feedback from the learners and stakeholders to be able to clarify whether the radio programs meet their needs and expectations successfully. We cannot just be complacent and be confident that after the first learning episode being aired over the radio, we say we're already successful. We already have taught that students in that episode and I think they already have learned. We have to get feedback. Is this working? And where to get the feedback is from, of course, the learners themselves, the teachers who are also monitoring in the airing of the learning episode, and even to the parents, which also have the critical, the critical ears to listen and look at how children learn as they listen. Kasi nasa sa kanila yung mga bata, wala sa atin. That is why feedback mechanism has to be established to be able to progressively monitor our students learning and at the same time evaluate the implementation process of the radio-based instruction. Number two, managing the change process. Why do we have to do this? Well, uh, essentially, we do this to provide helpful guidance for the system producers to create more open and flexible educational milieus. In the evaluation process, which is a continuous procedure, the data are collected from different sources and then the findings are analyzed and summarized to obtain the results. Again, we have to manage the process and it's just not an ordinary process, but a change process. The evaluation process of producing interactive radio programs let the designers make right decisions on the usefulness and value of distance education systems. Therefore, my dear teachers, principals listening with me right now, the evaluation process serves the specific answers about the ill-structured steps and learning circumstances, and that the monitoring guidelines for the educational and communication designers during the production of the programs are actually threshed out. The critical question to ask now is, how educational organizations respond to these changes and demands. And when we talk about organization, organizations, tayo po ito. The planned strategies for the necessary changes in distance education systems to integrate interactive radio programs. Titingnan natin, developing the strategic technology plan, sa sinabi ko na, as the first step towards implementing the program development process, and now we are e evaluating the process. Kasi gusto natin that if there are uh, insufficiencies or lapsations or there are there are defects in terms of the delivery process, both in teaching and learning using RBI, there's still a way for us to really adjust uh, because we have evaluated the implementation so that the next time we deliver the learning episode, we have factored in those issues and concerns. Again, if you look at the framework, it's designing, it's implementing, and it's evaluating. Ganun lang po ang kabuuan ng aking kinwento. At this time, ladies and gentlemen, it's time to take a look at the mode of transmission, transmission and radio-based instruction. Number one, ito, the airing of RBI lessons in a local community radio station. If you look at the teacher, she's doing it live. She's at the radio station. She's there watching her laptop, probably some of the guides of the learning episodes that she's actually she's actually using in, in the in airing RBI lessons right at the real time. This is being ma managed by etong RBI lessons in our local community radio stations. There. Apparently, 
or or generally this is being managed by the radio station with our teacher. Uh, well, for ALS could be the mobile teacher, but for us, I think Eva has given you the insight on organizing the team and the members of the team uh, do different things. They have specific assignments to work on. And probably the teacher to be on air is also one of the important member of the team that already is tasked to deliver the instruction. And then the teacher here is acting as a broadcaster or a radio teacher. And then the RBI lessons are aired on specific time slots for the learners to listen to from the radio sets at home or wherever they may be. So again, sisiguruhin natin that our children learning through RBI have the monitors or the transistor radios. So if they do not have, then we have to factor that in in terms of source generation. As a support, pwede namang bumili ang parents. Pero yung mga magulang na wala namang kakayahan bumili, dapat talagang pag-usapan natin. Paano natin matutulungan? And then, we go to the next mode is broadcasting of RBI lessons through makeshift radio station. Kung meron tayong makeshift buildings, we can also create, construct, establish uh, makeshift uh, radio stations. This will need a public address system using audio, audio equipment such as your microphones, the loudspeakers, tawag natin sa ating trompa. They have to be set up. Like in a real radio station, the teacher implementer reads the radio-based instruction scripts while learners listen, either on site or at a distance while they're working at home or in a farm. For example, kung walang radio talaga sila, magtayo tayo ng makeshift radio station pa for as long as may trompa and at a hearing distance because of this radio station makeshift establishment. Kahit wala silang transistor radio, they are still learning because you have amplified the voice of the broadcaster because of the makeshift radio station you have established. Like in a real radio station, yung mga bata natin makikinig habang ginagawa ang kanilang kawain, whatever that be. And in the areas where electricity is not available, then the radio-based makeshift can use a car battery or a generator to the radio station. At times, our teacher implementers, implementers bring the public address system by boarding it on a motorcycle or even in a banka to another side. Diba creative? So who would say that is not possible? So again, even if children do not have transistor radios, we can just actually put this transistor, the, this radio station makeshift in a tricycle. And it's mobile. Para bang ginagawa ng usual recorrida? Kaya lang ito, hindi siya info dissemination. It's really teaching. So, kayang abutin kahit wala talagang gadgets na sarili yung bata. For as long as we really have the political will to find the sources needed and deliver. The third is using canned RBI lessons. Ano ba, ito, ano ba itong canned? These canned lessons are those that are recorded on CDs or MP3s or in USBs and these lessons may be aired using CD players or any other audio player for MP3s. So, kung naka-CD siya, ipapasok mo lang yan sa iyong gadget, sa iyong CD player, and then mapapakinggan mo kung ano yung lesson na ni-record mo. Actually, when you go for RBI in a regular format, we can also have some compliments, like the CD recordings, like the recording it because you want to use it, in your like recorrida form or make or sh make shift radio station or ipadala na lang ang mga CD sa mga bata at sila ay matuto sa kanilang oras na i-design naman natin kasi there will still be class programs that we really have to fix before implementing whatever modality we are planning to invest on so ngayon let's take a look at the ano ba mga hamon kapag ini-implement natin ang RBI we can actually enumerate 
ang hamon sa sustainability, ang hamon sa budget, the challenge of the talents. Do we have talents really to do? The, the script writers, of course, the script themselves is a great challenge. And let's take a look at these challenges and needs no? in terms of implementing RBI. Number one is the non-availability of educational content in audiovisual formats. Hindi na masyado sa anong problema if the self-learning modules, the ones we are writing now, are available. Because you just have to convert that into script. Tanong, sinong susulat niyan? Sinong magsasali niyan in a script, radio script format? tay tay din. So we really have to again or yen train or conduct webinar on script writing. There is one activity sponsored by the central office on RBI script writing. I don't know if it is already over because sa alam ko, ngayong linggo, i-deliver po yon and there are limited slots slots of participants by region. And I think Angie Buaron, who is coordinating RBI in the region, has already identified participants. Next, we go to the second challenge, which is the difficulty to produce content in quantity and quality in so short a time. So again, may iksay lang panahon. Meron tayo. We are already July 7 and August 24 is fast approaching. We do not really have the luxury of time to prepare all this necessary materials, necessary talents in terms of investing on radio-based instruction. But apparently, we still have more than a month to really do that. And I think that's enough if we really have to be, re to be very religious at starting already the preparations. Next is partnership. Wala tayong sariling istasyon. We really have to establish partnerships. And again, I already have said that operationally, if one station only gives two hours, this one will give three hours, this one will give two hours. That's why we really have to collaborate across the region. It's not just a radio station, radio program in isolation. Sana kung makagawa tayo ng radio scripts para sa lahat, we can just actually borrow, share to the rest of the different local radio stations in the different parts of the region. So again, partnership and the absence of pre-existing partnership for the design and broadcasting of the educational content is one of the needs and the challenges that beset us. But we still can do this. Uh, I think, congratulations, Lano del Norte. You already have, have finalized your partnership with the local government unit who owns the radio station and the TV station for your RBI and PVI as modalities for distance learning. Next, we go to the challenges on graphic artists, voice talents, writers, the actors, the ICT experts, the teachers. All these are very important elements in the team. So the team that constitutes RBI should have this. And where to find this? We can find this within the organization. ICT experts could be our teachers, could be our IT coordinators, our actors could be even our good students who can be actors. At the same time, they are the target clients for the RBI, but they can as well also play as actors. Lalong lalo na kapag recorded version. You record it in advance, the actors are the students themselves given the scripts, and then eventually when they learn, they are even more familiar because they were the ones who recorded the learning episode. But But of course, it doesn't deprive also our good teachers who are also good actors, writers, voice talents, graphic artists. This do not this do not limit as to who should be, because even the stakeholders outside of DepEd who have the expertise on graphics, on talents in terms of writing or voice talents or actors, we can actually source it. We can tap them. The need for communication and collaboration between education specialists and the professionals of the audiovisual sector for the production of educational programs is really very crucial 
that we have to answer. And then the next is the lack of know-how and expertise in monitoring and evaluating the learning. Ayon, kailangan tingnan natin. Marami sa atin good at planning, not much in implementing. And worse, we really have difficulties in evaluating. It's only in doing monitoring and evaluating well that we can improve. Succeeding uh, attempts, succeeding episodes for our learning to use, for example, radio-based instruction. Next, let's take a look at what then must be done. Ano ba dapat ang gawin? Effective collaboration. I always say that no, nothing or no one can beat the product of collaboration. No one is an no man is an island. More heads are better than one. So that we take a look at the teamwork, success. These are very essential. These are big words. And effective collaboration among broadcasters, education authorities, and educators is essential in ensuring the success of implementing our radio-based educational programs. Indeed, these sectors have their own areas of expertise. They complement each other, especially in the development and production of educational content. If you look at this that I have shared, the graphic, the voice talents, the writers, they have different expertise. But when all these expertise are put together, they're rolled into one, then this will bring us to a very successful radio-based instruction, not just in delivery, but even in outcomes. Number two, we can also take a look at our pragmatic decisions. Due to limited time available to create and produce educational content, content for radio, napakahalaga po to think of strategies and innovations that are feasible or doable. And then we share our resources, which is the wisest idea we could ever do. We revisit existing learning materials and convert them into something that can be adapted to a radio program and should be done purposeful. There are a lot of radio, well, when I was as an education supervisor in Sambuanga del Sur, during the implementation of a USAID program called Equals, there was a real, real English radio program that was done at the central office, but aired nationwide. I was able to write 16 scripts for 16 learning episodes that were assigned to me. And I can share to you some of those. But of course, they were said in English because it was a real world English program. And kasi sa scripts, hindi lang siya ordinaryong sulat. Di ba? Di ba sa scripts, kailangan may number? One, two, three, four. In the entire script, kailangan may number talaga sa left side. Kasi doon mo makikita kapag... Look at line number two, third word, you know, mabilis natin hanapin. So that in writing the scripts, even the number indicators at the left side, from the upper left, uh, from the upper from the upper part of the sheet up to the lowest part of the paper. Very, very important po yun. The next, we look at the learner-centered approach. We cannot just take a look at the learning episode, at the comfort of the teacher, at the learn. alam nyo, Sinabi ko yun eh. When I was when I was having a meeting last Sunday for our teacher writers and evaluators of our self learning modules, sinabi ko talaga hindi po ito pasikatan ng English. We're trying to make our approach cle clear, plain and simple because we have to remember that our students are learning by themselves without the teachers at the side. The parents may be at their side to also guide, take a look at the, the progress of learning. But again, we have to make into consideration, take into consideration that our approach should be focused at the learner because after all, they are our major clients. Let's, let's try to write our RBI scripts. Well, we don't write now, but just to take a look at you, take, take a look at the, the essentials in basic script writing for an educational uh, radio program. Number one, recondition, precondition and treatment of a radio educational script by looking at the targeted audience. Parang kanino ba tayo parang? Parang, parang nescafe lang, no? 
para kanino tayo bumabangon sa umaga o araw-araw para kanino ba ang mga scripts na sinusulat natin for the actors that play the drama on the learning episode remember that the learning episode is not for the actors but for our targeted audience for example if our audience is grade 1 are we able to fit the approach which are which are in the capacities the learning capabilities of our grade 1 listeners even the use of language even the clarity of instructions even of course in the use of words mahalaga po yun. the targeted audience should be a non-negotiable condition or precondition in terms of the radio educational scripts number two the program type ano to ano bang learning episode bukas na gagamitin natin kung tayo na sa team if we are if we are in a team that's assigned to really do the rbi number two thing that we have to consider is the program type drama bang gagawin natin and remember you just don't use it for the sake of variation you use drama because you feel that the lesson is better delivered in a drama form. So again, do not insist on a program type if it doesn't fit to the subject you're talking about, to the lesson you are delivering, and especially if also the type does not fit to your targeted audience. Drama bang gagawin? Talk show ba? Game show? Or is it a test? Or is it a lecture? Things like this have to be talked under the program type. Next is program length. Gano ba kahaba? Will my grade 1 listeners still have the attention span if I deliver this in one hour? Itong lesson na tatalakayin natin, pang sang araw ba to? Pang sang linggo ba to? Pwede ba pang sang linggo? Bakit hindi? You just have to really make sure that the length of the program is really clarified. And when you clarify the length of the program, consider other preconditions like the two things I mentioned earlier. Presentation style. The use of language. The question and answer style. Is it a dictation? So when you speak of dictation, alibawa, nagkaroon ka ng dictation as part of your RBI, you have to make sure that you read the script very well. When you say reading well, does it have the correct patterns? Does it have the correct enunciation? Pronunciation that, that does it consider correct observation of punctuation marks? That if it is not a yes no question, the, the intonation falls down. Diba? Alam naman natin yun. If we say, do I make it clear? It is an, it is answerable by yes or no, so that the intonation is rising. Do I make my presentation clear? No. But if the question is not answerable by yes or no, then it has to follow a falling intonation like, in what aspect do you consider this? No. You don't say, in what aspect do you consider this? So, ladies and gentlemen, all the, these are very elementary examples that I'm just saying, trying to to infuse right now to trigger your mind a little bit, so that this should be considered under the presentation style. And then, of course, number five is very important: the content. More than the grammar, more than the form, more than the style, the content itself is a major consideration or a major precondition to treat under RBI. What does, what are, what are the things that belong to content? The elements and the composition of the program. The lesson themselves, the rules, if it's about rules, no? so and all that. No? And ladies and gentlemen, that next is educational goals to be achieved. Let's try to take a look at the program goals, whether they really have to be met, they re whether they are met, they are meeting the expectations, the needs. They also consider and meet the demands for cultural backgrounds. Do you consider preferences 
and the characteristics of the target audience. You have to make your approach universal because our learners in the Philippines are so diverse so that it should not jeopardize other beliefs or doesn't have to, that does not, uh, does not distort other beliefs or that gives equal importance to all kinds of listeners we have. That's why you try to take a look at the other areas that have to be said universally to make sure that everything has been taken into consideration. Well, what are the things that we have to take a look at? No? Very simple ito. Use short sentences, use simple and common words. Why do you have to say, I hitchhike to the idea, for example, if you can simply say, I agree to the idea or I support to the idea. So make your vocabulary simple and common to the understanding of the learners. Do you get what I mean? No? And especially if it's English instruction, remember that there are words of multiple meanings. The same word, the same pronunciation of the word, the same spelling, but different meanings. That's why you have to use it in a context. So I think, for example, the word, um, the word, uh, ano pa bang maisip ko? Foot, for example, F-O-O-T, foot. If I will say, I hurt my left foot in coming to school. What do I mean by foot in that sentence? I hurt my left foot in coming to school. So it's the part of the body which I refer to foot. But I can use the same word foot giving another meaning. If I will say, my, my plant at the backyard is now one foot high. Of course, it's not the part of the body. But when I say one foot high, it's the unit of measure. So that's again foot, same spelling, same sounds when you produce it, but different meanings. When I say Catriona Gray won as Miss Universe because she, let, she, she put her best foot forward. What does it mean? She put her best foot forward. It's not part of the body. It's not the unit of measure. But putting your best foot forward would mean give your best. But it is still foot. But the meaning is giving your best. Foot. If I say today is my birthday, I will invite you for dinner. Don't worry, I will foot the bills. It's still foot, but it's not part of the body. It's not the unit of measure. It's not giving your best. But when I say I will foot the bills, meaning I'll take care of the expenses. So, you know, these are words of multiple meanings. If I say, uh, the foot of Mount Malindang have so many ornamental plants. So what do you mean by foot of Mount Malindang? It's a part of the body. It's not be, uh, putting your best foot forward. It's not the unit of measure, but it's the base of a mountain. The, the foot of Mount Malindang. See, it's still foot. Why did I use some examples on this? Because we have to be very critical about the use of words and we have to make our approach, our statements simple and use common words. Okay, so that's what I mean. Well, it is also good to use these words differently, but that depends on the objective of your learning episode. If your lesson is about using words in multiple meanings, then go for it. But if it is not about using the words in multiple meanings, then you have to make things clear. Next is using the active voice whenever possible. So not the passive, but the active. Very important because uh, statements using the active voice really is clearer than using the passive. You know? So you know, you have to really consider the grammar rules, the simple and basics of, of the language, not just of English, but in Filipino, when you already write the script, develop and deliver the script. Use informal and friendly tone. Do not be speaking like an orator that you deliver in emphasis, that you don't make it very conversational. You should sound friendly or informal. 
so that our students listening at the transistor radios will also have the interest to learn because it's just like the teacher talking to her even if the teacher is not in the house. Explain, illustrate, and illustrate a point after discussing it. Give only reasonable amount of information. At yung sinabi ni Eva, you don't have to be ambitious of addressing all competencies in one learning episode. Let us do not, let do not, let's not, let's not give information overload to our listeners. Remember, on top of this, the number one consideration really is our targeted clients. Give the learners a chance to process the ideas and uh, process the ideas presented before moving on. Okay, and then these are self-explanatory. In scripting for educational radio, just to show this to you, no? uh, it's almost, let me check, it's already 12. Just, just allow me to run through with you on this. The summary of main topics. And if you look at the summary of main topics, you have to take a look at the, the key sentences of the paragraphs, the supporting details of the paragraph, to be able to take it as a whole summary of main topics. So, titingnan mo, you break it down, look into the essentials of the topics. And then, kailangan there's brief discussion. Uh, not just for the radio team, but even in designing the RBI script, you really have to, to discuss it briefly, make sure that you don't waste time, you make sure that you make your things clear, and the summary of the topics covered should also be talked about. This is about scripting or writing the scripts of the RBI. Finally, ladies and gentlemen, this is my last slide. I just would like to run through with you on reminders and what are these. We have to be creative in applying RBI. Well, there are models to learn from, but if we can create some new approaches for the RBI, we're not actually deprived because creativity is very, very essential. This is one C in the 21st century teaching and learning Cs. Remember, creativity is a 21st century skill and you just do not have to follow well, there's nothing wrong of following the conventional RBI, but you have to take a look at how our learners think as of now. Because if our approaches in teaching in the past worked, do not insist. Do not say, but we learned this way and we were successful. You have to remember that our approaches may be in the past, our approaches in the past that have worked, may be obsolete for now and may no longer be applicable at present because the evolution continues and even the way our students are learning, the way our students think are being influenced by the current environment, which probably have the features that were not present during our old time environment. So again, creativity, even in your radio-based instruction. Be mindful and sensitive to your learners. That was number one consideration. Habang ikaw yung nagsasalita dyan sa radyo, nakikinig mo ba? Napapakinggan mo ba ang sarili mo? Naririnig ba sarili mo? Na, naririnig mo ba ang sarili mo? Na naiintindihan ba ng mga kabataan yung sinasabi mo? And look at the performance of your learners by getting feedbacks from how do they learn, what are they learning, what are their difficulties of coping? Kailangan, feedback is a very good avenue for you to be reminded and improved and eventually get what you really desire for in radio-based instruction. Reinforce RBI with other learning modalities. As what I've said, baka napakahirap naman ang isang bata ay natututo sa kanyang grado sa lahat ng asignatura sa buong taon na radyo na lang ang ginagamit. I'm not underestimating the power of radio, but I think it is a better learning if the radio-based learning is also backed up, reinforced by other learning modalities. Redesign your program activity if necessary. Again, if you need to change your restructure, your design, do it, because these are not casted in stones. Remember the concept of RMEPA? 
uh, monitoring, evaluation, and plans adjustment. Letter A is very essential. So that even in your day-to-day -day delivery of your radio-based instruction, you can always design, you can always adjust, you can always structure it using the feedbacks that you actually get from your monitoring. What are the sustainable solutions? We, I'm, I'm in my last set of slides, don't worry. These are very short already. If you look at the sustainable solutions, number one we have to consider is important matters must be considered. Do not just focus on other things, but the major, major areas. The use of radio broadcast as distance learning solutions is a powerful way to bridge the digital divide in the education sector and reach the most marginalized learners. However, there are still some important matters to consider. And number one, many questions related to quality assurance of educational programs, motivation of learners, particularly our youngest learners, kindergarten, grade one, two, and three, the assessment, which is how do we measure whether the, st the students really are learning? So again, assessment is a big issue and the measurement of learning outcomes. How do we, uh, how do we be, how do we ascertain that learning outcomes are achieved the way we design and we expect. And this may be addressed by still uh, looking at more investments. Moreover, the question of long-term sustainability of these programs is also in discussion. Again, the motivation of the learners have to also be taken into consideration. These are immediate areas of thinking. All must commit to produce knowledge and evidence to ensure that even in radio-based instruction or in all other combinations of modalities we adapt, we ensure that no one is left behind by the distance education responses due to COVID-19 pandemic. Friends, ladies and gentlemen, as we all strive to continue to deliver quality basic education amidst the threats of COVID-19, no one must be left behind. Thank you for your indulgence with me, and I would be willing to answer questions. I'll give you around 10 minute open forum, and uh, Floor or the one on board can facilitate for the question and answer. And I hope you are learning from at least uh, you have gained some insights to my presentation. The time is not enough. The rest of those expectancies that are not met in the lecture will already be your assignment, will already be your share. Because in training, we cannot just develop the whole of ourselves by just attending. Because the biggest part of the journey is what do you do after the training? In other words, what do you do after this webinar? So more on implementing, operationalizing the plans that you will make out of this webinar. And congratulations, I hope Lano del Norte will, will be one division who will be at its best in delivering education through radio-based instruction. Mayong udto ka natong tanan and daghang salamat. Yeah. Thank you and daghang salamat. RD. Okay, at this time, we will be uh, entertaining questions, RD. Answer floor. Okay, we have the first question, RD. Uh, pwede ba ta makapili what modalities kung ahata comfortable? Yes. But actually, it's not the individual person that decides. Can I, how do I stop my presentation? Dismiss ba? I hope I will not be lost. Request for... Lor, can this, how can we take this out on screen? Uh, Ardi, i-click lang ng one. Say, after sa top, top, sa imong screen, Ardi, na i-stop stop sharing. Pinakataas. Wala kasi ako nakita. Dismiss na kalagay. Dismiss. Pataas pa, Ardi. Move lang ang cursor sa taas. Magawas na siya. Uh, let me see. Wala eh. Hindi kasi ito ano. We're using Teams, right? Yes, in yeah. Teams, RD. Oh, Binipo sa bottom, RD. Uh, sa pinakaubos, kanay mo ang mga 
icon diri sa ubos, i-click ng MS Teams, makita ni mo ang imuhang kuwan diya. More options? What do you mean? No, no. Sa ubos lang, RD. May mga, may mga icons si RD sa MS Teams, then one of that kuwan, uh, katong imuhang screen na mismo, i-click lang din tong uh, share, instead nga share, stop sharing. Yeah, I, I, I saw that in some times, no? But di ko siya nakita ngayon. Interface clean, the show background effects, turn keypad, turn off. Turn off incoming video, wala. Uh, ako ang isa, stop ang mga dali ardiya para magkuha ni mga. Sige daw? Tanaw ako na Arden, basig na ako yung magkita diya. Tao, boss. Wala man ako magkita. Makita na ni mo ang image teams, Arden? Hindi. Kasi nandun yung mga mukha ng mga participants eh. Nasa oh, yeah. yes, Ardy. Sa baba, Ardy. Pinakababa. Yung mga icon sa baba. Wala. Ito lang. No new notification. Switch camera. Hindi yan, Ardy. the sound. Nakita ko yun before eh. Anyway, sige. Can you not turn it by yourself? Hindi, hindi, ko, hindi ko makontrol yung... Sharing mo, Ardy. Ang pwede ko, ah, sa ngayon, Ardy, wala ka na, hindi ka na, naka-share. Okay. Wala na ako? Okay lang? Oo. Yung kuha na. Kami na dito. So, yeah, thank you. Now, if the question was about the choice of modality, whether are you, are you given the liberty to decide for what's best that you, you think in terms of modality fitness? Actually, yes, but it has to be a decision of the school. It's not the individual teacher. The entire school has to meet, analyze the situations, and decide on the modality. And number one decision factor is, are you ready? Are you capable of the modality? And if you think you are, then go for it. But of course, you also have to listen. You also have to listen to the restrictions of our health authorities. For example, sir, gusto namin face-to-face. -face. Well, the president has spoken that face-to-face -face cannot be allowed when vaccine is not, is not available. So we are under the command of the president who only, wants, who only wants the best for his country. And I think we have to follow. Pero kung anong, for example, anong mga specifics on your decisions, again, we can. We are given so much liberty to do that. But again, look at the doability, the capability, and of course, efficiency. And it is not an individual teacher's decision, but it has to be the decision of the entire school environment. Kasama din po ang input ng mga parents. Na kasi you cannot just say, well, gusto ko kasi online, kaya ng mga teachers, kaya ba ng mga bata nyo? At ano bang feedback ng mga magulang? So it's not just because you want it, because you like it, but it is because the best that you can do looking at the client side as well. Thank you. Okay, thank you, RD. Another question, RD. How can contextualization be applied in different modalities? Contextualization, usually in depth ed, is more, of, is more on the area of language use is taking a look at the cultural differences, the diversities, and you have to do this. Uh, that is why I insisted that the region has to come up with its own project or initiative in writing the modules from kindergarten to grade 12. Even at the central office, the entire Philippines, entire regions were also assigned to write modules by regions. For example, region 8, is assigned to write modules for grade three for the use of the for the use for the entire country. Region 10 is assigned to write on the applied subjects and core subjects of grades 11 and 12. No? But sinabi ko, kailangan talaga pa rin nating magsulat because number one, what if this will not be available? And currently and apparently the central office is still not ready. So at least meron na tayong kompleto na ngayon ay quality assure ng ating evaluators. Number two, in the aspect of contextualization, kasi yung kinder grade 1, 2, and 3 ay isusulat sa mother tongue. And the ones entrusted to write 
is one region in Luzon area. So they must have used Tagalog or Ilocano or whatever. So how can we adapt that? So we have to contextualize it. Ngunit ang gawa natin, ginawa na natin to Bisaya. But of course, this still need contextualizing or indigenizing the, the lesson, especially in the areas of indigenous peoples, communities. So, kailangan. So, the usual, the usual deliverables of contextualizing it. Kasi, we make our learning, our teaching and learning relevant. Relevant. For example, dati, I was a teacher in English grade 6. To teach uh, the lesson in English of identifying commands and requests, sa libro na aming ginamit noon, we talk about the story how children dance uh, how Bridget danced in her red shoes. It was a story of a children's day, which is an occasion celebrated annually in Copenhagen, Denmark. So, kailangan nilang basahin yun. Anong ginagawa ng mga kabataan on that day, declared holiday, because it's children's day, and this is a practice in Copenhagen City, Denmark. Now, kung ang purpose is just to develop the cause and effect relationship in language, eh, bakit ko paggagamitin yung Copenhagen na ay mga kabataan natin, hindi nga napunta ng Maynila, pupunta ka pa ba ng Denmark? So I will use another another material, which is in the in the, in the concept of the, re, re, the level of experience of my learners, for example, talking about festival in Lanao del Norte. I will write a short selection, a paragraph about it. And then they identify the cause and effect relationship that are that can be seen in the selection. But again, it's interesting because you talk about festival in Lanao where everybody is familiar with rather than talking about the festival in Denmark. That's what I mean. No? So contextualization is still the same way we're doing and it is still a requirement in radio-based scripts so that we will sound relevant to our listeners. Remember, ang isa dito, medyo kailangan din nating tingnan pansinin, kahit hindi siya ang focus, kapag ini-air na natin yung ating radio-based learning episodes at the radio, we do not restrict it only to learners listening. Anybody can actually listen for as long as it is it is reached by the satellite, by, by the network. So you cannot stop from professionals listening to your learning episodes who might also make comments and good if we are doing it right. Because the ears of the people in the Republic of the Philippines are also hooked to the radio station that delivers your learning episode. Una, huwag naman lang tayong matatakot sa kanila kasi ang tutuka natin yung ating kliyente ng mga kabataan. But I'm just letting you know that there are other interested sectors who will also listen which are not the major beneficiaries of your Radio-based instruction. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Ardi, for our last question. Um, how about the giving of periodical exam, sir? Will I give it at the same time to all my students? Because some students may finish their lessons faster than other students who do not have internet access, radio, or TV. This is an operational issue that the entire school has to decide. That is why in my presentation, there was a slide that talks that our RBI should be reinforced by other learning modalities. Because in the assessment side, you cannot just allow the student to listen to your learning episode from August to April next year without doing assessment. So how do you do the tests? How do you do the assessments, whether it's, un with, whether it's a unit test or a summative test or even just actually a, a formative test? Huh? Again, you really have to think of that. How do you deliver? I cannot impose upon you. This is the way to do it. But you can actually create. That is why ako talaga yung naniniwala na sana kung papayagan tayo ng blended learning, like a combination of face-to-face, and face-to-face -face and distance learning, hindi ako masyadong kakabahan doon. Because after giving the lessons for the students to learn in two days, 
I will be very sure that the third day makikita kami kasi sila naman ang magfa-face to face and I will have the chance to do my assessment right there before them. But what if face to face cannot be cannot be allowed? So again, you have to strategize. Maybe just a sample, if I'm a teacher of of 30 students, tapos sa puro uno, that's why I said it's very good that the sectioning should consider residences of learners. Well, then doon pa rin naman tayo that heterogeneous or homogeneous groupings are still options, but there is more wisdom of putting learners into same sections because they live in the same community. Why? What is the advantage of sectioning them according to residences? You You know students at this time of pandemic where they are they are, there are stigma there are anxieties they have they need support system and if the classmates are just in the neighborhood they can see each other they can talk about the lessons and more than that is for example uh kulang ka sa pondo i was always talking to the superintendents that you do not i mean I mean, funds would tell us that we do not have enough funds to reproduce our self-learning modules in modular approach one is to one because it needs billions. So I was telling them, why don't you adapt reproducing the SLMs into sets A, B, and C, set A, set B, set C. For example, sa isang purok, purok dos, I have five students there. So probably, yung student one ko, bigyan ko siya ng English Math Science. Yung student ko, student ko Filipino, araling palipunan ng TLE. Yung isa, MAPI, Values, Education, and Health. Ganun. And then, during the week, they, sh- they exchange their modules. So, kumbaga, instead of, instead of buying or producing modules for all of them, then one-third na lang ang kailangan kong reproduce because they just share. So, it's taking advantage of the opportunity to reproduce and strategize the distribution to make sure that sharing is possible. Second, sa sectioning uh, by residences, um, for example, your question was about assessment, no? How do I assess? How do I give the test? How do I progressly monitor? Pwede namang bukas ng umaga, ako teacher, I will go there. Sa purok dos, meron akong lima. Iko-convene ko yung lima sa barangay hall, at least not in the school, o nasa barangay lang nila. Nasa hall nila, pro call. And then, can I observe social distancing? Of course, because I only have five there. So, doon ako mag-a-assess, meron ako mga exercises na hinanda to triangulate whether they are learning their tasks. No, ganon. And then, it's face-to-face, but in the barangay, and then distance learning, lima lang. And then, in the afternoon, I'll go to Porok Tres. I will also have my three pupils there. Ganon. Punta din ako. And that can be adapted. We really have to go out and follow through. We cannot just sit down in the school or at home and pabayaan na lang ang mga bata sa sarili lang pamamaraan sa pagkatuto at hindi natin sila sinusukat kung natututo ba sila o hindi. That's what we should do. And I'm encouraging the principals, the superintendent to also order principals that they should support the teachers. What support would they need? Probably transportation allowance. Kasi kung ikaw principal, you expect the teacher to travel in a week, punta ka ng dalawang araw o tatlo kasi pupuntahan mo yung neighborhood one, neighborhood two, neighborhood three. Then you also provide support. And well, we don't expect to get the money from your own pockets, but I think you have to allot or allocate them from the MOOE to provide transportation allowance to teachers and schedule it. Do it rotational. Kasi hindi naman lahat magsabay-sabay aalis. Otherwise, kung example, MOGS, misami sa Oriental General Comprehensive High School, 300 teachers, sabay-sabay silang umalis 300. That would need a lot of money to really give transportation allowance to the 300. So, I mean, this will be patched up. This will be arranged at the school level by meeting the principal and the teachers, factoring in the feedback of the stakeholders. Paano siya? How can this be drawn on the board to make things happen? So mga ganun bagay, more of these strategies are common sense. And I think you have a lot of this better than I have. So you really have, these are again operational issues. Academic issues siya kasi you do assessment. 
but in terms of delivering, kasi ang, here, ang problema natin ngayon, madali naman mag-assess, mag-paper and pencil test ka, mag-performance test ka, mag-portfolio test ka, we have a lot of assessment forms. Master na tayo niyan. Ang tanong, how to deliver that in distance learning? How to do assessment in radio-based instruction? So, our challenge is on the delivery of the assessment. And that should be decided by the division, by the district, and by the school itself. Because this is an operational concern in terms of the conduct of assessment. Salamat po. Okay, thank you very much, R.D. At this time, may we call in our school's division superintendent for his words of gratitude to our very own R.D. Sir Eddie. R.D., thank you so much for your time uh, you give to Lano del Norte. Uh, we are greatly honored. Uh, I know you are so busy, but then you spend your time. Uh, for Lano del Norte. At this point in time, RD, I uh, would like to inform you that we prepared a simply but heartily worded uh, certificate of appreciation uh, for you that would depict how uh, greatly we are indebted to you. I am requesting Dr. Iba Idon to read the citation of our certificate of appreciation for you, RD. Iba? Good morning po, R.D. Morning. Actually, R.D. Yeah, um, um, let me let me read you the citation. Uh, certificate of appreciation is presented to Dr. Arturo B. Bayocot, CESO 3, Regional Director of DepEd Region 10, for sharing his time and effort to help ensure that education continues despite the COVID-19 pandemic by serving as resource person on radio-based instruction, an alternative learning approach in time of pandemic. During the webinar on the production of audio and video lessons on July 6 to 7, 2020 at the division of Lano del Norte. Given this seventh day of July, 2020, at DepEd Division Office, Picaragan, Tubod, Lanao del Norte. Signed, Edilberto L. Oplinaria, CESO 5, Schools Division Superintendent. Thank you so much for RD, R, RD Art. Thank you so much for being with us today. Very good. We're so, so happy, RD. Welcome, welcome, and thank you very much. And I'd like to congratulate Eddie Oplinaria, Marian Aliera's partnership. Uh, sorry. Uh, well, I would like to congratulate the partnership of the leadership and the rest of the education leaders, both at the division, district, and school levels, for exploring the possibility of an RBI in Lanao del Norte. I think this is one modality that we could really make our approach interesting and being able to reach the unriched considering the terrain of Lanao del Norte, especially the hinterlands, and providing our learners the opportunity to learn differently because you have considered several modalities. Congratulations and I hope to, get, to hear great news of Lanao del Norte's LCP implementation pagdating ng panahon. Uh, again, thank you, RD. And I would like to inform you, RD, that uh, despite the issuance of the basic continuity education continuity learning plan from the central office uh, by Secretary Lili Briones, we also consider the peculiarity of the situations we have in Lano del Norte, RD. That is why we have some innovative modalities, and one of which is the uh, use of radio-based instruction, RD. Of which I have, uh, but this aside, I have e an experience of how that program will go on, uh, yeah, uh, yeah. implemented in Malibalay. And uh, I will be using that RD, that experience here in Lano del Norte. 
Thank you very much, Ed. Now, I, yeah, I, I forget that you have the edge over the others because you were an, a leader RBI implementer in the past. So take advantage of that. Congratulations. Thank you very much, RDA. Paniutun, RDA, Pasailuan, Nalugay, Kagkaon. Salamat. It's okay. It's okay. Bye, everyone. May meeting kasi ko. Alas dos. So salamat. Uh, good luck, RDA. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mary Ann. Thank you, Eva. Thor, salamat. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you RD. Okay, Ma'am Ann. Uh, please agree with Eva when we'll we return. But if I think uh, Ma'am Waron is already ready here. Yes, yes Ma'am. Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, let's, Ma'am Ann, what do you think? So just agree with Ma'am Ann. When will we resume? And uh, let's give the time to Ma'am Waron this afternoon session. I, I, correct, Ev? Si Ma'am Ev, yes, si Ma'am Waron. Actually, I told Ma'am uh, Ma Angie that uh, the first speaker will be a uh, user. And I then if I, I have the number of documents pa to sign. Uh, right, sir. Okay, so, okay. Ma'am Angie, mahalag ka po yung Okay, sir. Okay, I know Ma'am Angie is also busy. Kay kapulikin po na sila dia. Ronan na nato sila. At least they have their time with us. Okay, sir. Okay, sir. So, okay, sir. I'm back at 1 o'clock. Oh, uh, time, time, time. Hello, Ed. Yes, yes ma'am. Uh, sir, thank you, sir. sir.